is James Arnold Taylor, voice of Obi-Wan Kenobi. Welcome to a more civilized podcast. This is the podcast you're looking for. You may not go about your business. Stay here, listen, and then move along. Welcome, dear listeners, to another episode of a more civilized podcast. I'm Kyler. I'm Chris. I'm Russ. Yep, we sure are. We still are, surprisingly. Still here. Anyway, uh, this episode... What? I don't know who else I'd be, but... Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> I think Not too Ross? surprised to still be me. <laughs> we should all introduce ourselves as our wives one episode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, we've got uh, some fun stuff to get to today. We're going to talk about spaceships. But before we do that, Ross has some news. Yes. So we have a couple new things this week. Most exciting of which you have probably already seen because A, we posted about it on the Facebook and also it's been all over the internet. Yep. Has been the Vanity Fair article. That it was they like posted. a solid week on Twitter where that was trending for me. <laughs> yeah, it's been out a week yet. It's only been a couple well, of days. Since it's been out, yeah. it's been there for me. Yeah. Since I've Twitter. only been on Twitter there, I've only been on Twitter once since it came out. So, yeah. yep. So uh, the main part of the article that's getting shared are the, all the images cool. from the article, and apparently, actually, in the first article that I saw, it didn't have all of them. There have been others. Oh, really? Yeah, that have, that have come out. Um, But uh, they're all gorgeous, every single one of them. Yep, they look pretty. They sure Um, do. Even the the behind-the-scenes stuff still looks... I mean, they are really, really solidly well-done shots. Um, And there was an article to go with it that does have some details, apparently, from the film. Uh, One of which was not correct, which they did eventually uh, retract. Um, It was either not correct or something that Lucasfilm didn't want out. So they're saying, no, that's not correct. Retract it. (laughs) We we talked about it when we were talking about the trailer. You know the shot from the trailer where Kylo Ren body slams a dude? Yeah. Yeah. The the Vanity Fair Oh, article. they reported that that was one of the Knights of Ren. Yeah. 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 And then later said no. In, in a Reddit yeah, AMA, was... said no, that's not correct. Yeah. And then they removed it from the article. So I still, I'm inclined to think that it's not because the costume was still so different. Well, yeah, we've also got a enough. photo that's saying this is a photo of some of the Knights of Ren here. Yeah. And, and it doesn't quite, but yeah, it doesn't quite yeah. match up. They're definitely dark and kind of leathery clad, but yeah, it's not not quite the same. No They're definitely same carrying rule. forward Kylo's whole... I'm a Star Wars cosplayer, and look how dark and cool and edgy this is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. no one. I, I did look, and no one had that particular club. Although we didn't see everyone's weapons, yes, so it's that's true. Yeah. very unlikely. Still technically opinion. possible, but yeah. probably the the unlikely. Yeah, uh, my particular favorite shot was the Luke amongst the flames with R two. Yeah, so, I gorgeous wonder shot. How that's gonna work? There are all sorts of things it could be. So, yeah. uh. At least with The Last Jedi, you know how they had the Force Ghost Yoda? It was actually a puppet on set that they just applied the effects to afterwards. So, I mean, it still could be Force Ghost Luke. Yeah. It could be flashback. It could be... The whole R2 next to him makes me think that it's a flashback, but... Well, maybe, yeah. but... Because I was looking at it, and it doesn't look like an old Luke flashback. Right. He that, doesn't have the same hairstyle he's that He's got Luke, episode, eight, Luke did. Uh, episode 7 and 8, mm-hmm. you yeah, know, that's old a good Luke point. That's a good haircut. Point. Um, I'm, I'm one I thing that I have not heard I that. have not heard many people positing the possibility that the rise of Skywalker could literally be Skywalker rising from the dead <laughs> <laughs> well we've already uh, had one Christ motif why not another <laughs> yeah, well, you, in um, sci-fi and fantasy you never run out of them so yep <laughs> I did notice that he is wearing a glove over the robot hand um, hmm. which, which he wouldn't need in robot or a ghost form right well maybe but he, still he could have clubs. i mean <laughs> um, he thinks I'm, it's a cool look he's keeping it for all eternity that's right he's going with the michael jackson <laughs> and I'm, I'm trying to remember at what point that he has or doesn't have it in last jedi because i don't think he wears it the whole film in last jedi no he never wears a glove over it that i remember uh, he, he might wear a glove over it when he does. goes to milk the thing and was going about his daily. I'm pretty sure chores. he does. I think, well, he does at some point. He's not. I'm when pretty he sure, like when saber. he goes and kisses Leia on the forehead. I'm pretty sure he's wearing a glove. Is he? Yeah, I think you might. Yeah, you might be right. That sounds. You know, and it's also possible that they're doing the Marvel thing and doctoring the photo. Yeah. To yeah, that so, could be. You never know. Because when he pulls the hood back at the beginning, he's got the robot hand. Yes. He doesn't have a glove. But. I'm trying to think, think of it after that. I'm not sure you see I'm the robot hand after think. that. Oh, you do see the. You see it quite a few times after he that. He must but. have. I boy, I don't know why my brain is working this way. He must have the robot hand when he's teaching Ray about the Force, and he like slaps her hand. Not because I can remember anything from the movie, but I remember seeing a video with him having 
the CGI green mm. oh, glove, yeah, the on glove on <laughs> and holding the the thing. So he must have had the have had the robot thing. hand yeah. for that shot. I'm not sure where else, but I I'm almost 100 percent sure he has a glove on mm. when he kisses Leia's mm -hmm. uh, forehead. So um, jumping back to this article, what's your favorite shot here, Kyler? These Ooh. images. Um, well, Kylo Ren looks cool. My favorite shot, though, again, just because I'm a sucker for a slick uniform and bad guys, General oh, yeah, Pride. Yeah. I like whoever that one this too. new General Bad Guy, uh, Allegiant, Allegiant General, Allegiant Pride, General, Pride, Allegiant General yeah. Pride. I love me some Richard E. Grant. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, like he he looks Imperial through and through. You know, he's got that crisp evil British villain look going. His uniform because looks he is he, exactly. British and always <laughs> plays evil villains. Yes, exactly. <laughs> as as we knew he would. Um, but he looks snappy. The uniform looks super cool. Like it mm -hmm. looks a little bit different than oh, yeah. some of the uh, officers' uniforms we've seen so More far. Of a robe so look. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah, it's it's really kind of a cool, so, distinct look. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. First, that was the other rumor that came out of this that ended up being wrong. People thought that it was Hux's dad. We already know Hux's <laughs> he's dad's dead. name. Yeah, he's dead. Yeah. So no, it's not Hux's dad. Yeah, it's the new it's guy. Not Brendel Hux. I, uh, I personally, I really want this to be the whole like schism in the first order that th this guy working with Hux and them like building this thing against that Kylo Ren. Cool. That would be cool. That would actually, that would be really cool. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and that's been putting them together there is that image. Well, of... and also, I, Pride really caught me because in episode eight, we got one of the best first order. Mo okay. So there have been two really killer first order moments for me. One is Hux's speech at the end of seven. You do not get more hardcore imperial goodness than that speech. Goodness. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he is just, he is everything you are looking for in an imperial leader. Have you, have you seen many Hitler speeches? Yeah, I have. <laughs> I'm a historian. Yeah. I've seen many of them. <laughs> That's what it was packed yeah. And And he does such a good job. I mean, he's literally foaming at the mouth with mm -hmm. rage. That's just, it's perfect. It's a perfect portrayal of what that character should be. And then the second moment is episode eight. Um, at the beginning uh, of the when the battle comes in, they got the dreadnought, the dreadnought yeah. commander, Captain Kennedy, uh, um, and like his Kennedy. just total, even in the face of death, his total just disdain for the rebels. I'm like, you fetching nailed it, buddy! <laughs> like you are an imperial. This yeah. is awesome. So I'm looking at that picture of General Pride, and I'm going, you got that same air about you, dude. That's just kind of like you, pathetic rebels. You know, you yeah. rebel scum. Like, what are we? You know, your your ants that need to be crushed kind of an air about him. So I'm hoping that we I'm get gonna, to see more of that. I'm going to call it now, though. This is clearly them setting up for the Marvel Star Wars crossover <laughs> that's going to be Kitty Pride's like, grandfather or something. Uh, <laughs> okay. Oh, shoot. Go for it, Chris. <laughs> my favorite my favorite image is either, the, is either that one or the... the uh, Kylo and Ray facing off in the like spray of yes. water. That yeah, that was my awesome. second. That that is yeah. really a cool look. But I was thinking like just more like imperial look. Oh yeah, for like the bad guys. Like man, those are such good moments. It is a nice shot. I like and so it. I'm hoping that we get more of that because I was looking at Kennedy and I'm going, I want to see more of this dude. And then he gets blown up, and it's like, ah, dang it, you yeah. know. Uh, now I do kind of wonder about his title of being a legion general. What yes. does that mean? Is that like I have an no idea. Yeah, I want that to be like this is a faction that has like I'm some sort of military faction mm -hmm. in the galaxy that is just wholesale sworn allegiance to the first order, yeah. and so he's like head of that group reporting well, to Hux. Or... This this is my thinking, and it's possible because I'm not currently caught up on all the books that are out. Yeah, so maybe I there's something more so out than there, I but I don't think so. Um. We know that not every Imperial made it to the unknown regions mm. to join up, and okay. that and that that's what becomes the First Order. Yeah. Now a majority of them did, and and a significant portion of them did, but not all of them. Yeah. So I'm wondering if there were again, if they're pulling from the old EU from Legends and saying there were a variety of splinter groups of the Empire that right. all either fell or made coalitions or you know whatever Ooh. or. Uh, Oh, sorry, no, sorry, no, you finish ahead. up, or, yeah, sorry. Or he, this is the this is a general from the New Republic who just wholesale took his troops and <laughs> marched Ooh, over I to the first order. Would absolutely Man. love right. That. <laughs> yeah, that would be intense. Dang, so give us a I, Benedict Arnold of Star Wars. Yeah, that would be. I would. That would redeem this entire sequel <laughs> trilogy for me if that happens. But uh, yeah, I, that would probably make me enjoy eight wholesale, just knowing that that's coming. 
but I don't think so. I don't think Disney would go that route. My guess is that this was like another Imperial Splinter group that was kind of like, oh, the First Order actually has a shot at overthrowing the Republic. Yeah. All right, we'll throw in our lot with them. Mm-hmm. Like, these are Could still be. my troops, but I'm willing to work with yeah. you. But, you know, having him... But, oh, man, a Benedict Arnold, that would be so cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, and either way, that still kind of fits in the tying up the entire series idea. If it's someone from the Empire... You're still bringing in those themes of having yeah. you know, empire yeah. around. So well, and I, a- I could st- totally be instead if it, even if it's not New Republic military because they didn't really have much military right. uh, to speak of. If it's just a planet that has just gone, you know what? Yeah, there's still pieces of the Republic still struggling to stay to stay afloat and everything, but nah, we're just going. We're swearing allegiance to the First Order. Here's our military. Give us some autonomy within your order, but. And we'll be allegiant to you. And right. Yeah. Could see that being. I could also. I like this Benedict Arnold theory. I'm going to run with this <laughs> right? for just a second. <laughs> so, well, and for that the bad it's guys. Not happen because well, they like it so but much, for the but... bad guys, they do tend to na- give them names that are sort of on the nose. Darth Maul, because he's just a hammer to yeah. smash people with, right? Darth Sidious, because he's in the shadows doing, you know, unseemly things, right? Yeah. General Grievous, again, another just, I'm straightforward in your face, you know, Tyrannus, because he's ruling over the Separatists with an iron fist. General Pride, mm-hmm. maybe his pride was hurt, he, you know, pride comes before the fall, there's a whole lot of, mm. I'm too proud, or, you know, like, there's, I don't know, so maybe yep, he is fair. a good guy who was just too proud, or, or thought of himself too highly, they promised him a better paycheck, or whatever, and he switches sides, out of pride. Yeah. I could that see that. That would be interesting. I could see that. We'll see what happens. And G- General Hux, of course, known for his great hugs and kisses. Yep, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> or is it what he desires most? Because his daddy clearly didn't love him. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's right. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, so who knows? Maybe that. Oh, man. I, I'm going to, like, lay in bed at night thinking about this awesome Benedict Arnold plan. That's yeah. <laughs> so, well, I'm sorry if that doesn't happen now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that's the Vanity Fair interview. I'm still waiting for, like, a full... Uh, synopsis of the thing because of, well, obviously I don't subscribe to Vanity Fair and I haven't seen anything pop through yet just a bunch of things that kind of have different information so hopefully something like that appears on the and internet and I didn't soon. read the article because I didn't want too many spoilers yeah is it on their website it is yeah. like when I just website. it's this um, this link in our yeah. notes here oh. leads to <laughs> and uh, so okay. I just went through and I looked at the pictures and then I just read like the the subtext for the picture that yeah, was all that's I read. what I did too yeah so I will link to that in the liner notes for this yep. episode. If you want to go look at it and get all the spoilers because you're a horrible person like that, you can go do that. Or maybe not spoilers, just, you know, come there on. There was a picture that had me worried, though, and that's of, um, what is it, Ray and Finn on, like, the, the no, fake it, No, it was horses. Finn and the new, like, oh, yeah, the new, the oh, new yeah, Finn and the name? new girl, yeah, yeah. Uh, Janna. Uh, they're on, like, warthog horses. Yeah, those were interesting. And, and they like, they, they look kind of yeah. cool. Orbax is what Orbax. they are. I just wanted to say warthog horse because that's what they look like yes that's a good description um i mean it's a cool shot it feels out of place because i'm like you have clearly like a fantasy horse (laughs) and then a sci-fi guy on top of it so yeah but they're on these orbacks these warthog horses which look fairly natural and then you have these very sci-fi looking people it's it's a little incongruous a little bit. It was kind of funny because I, I felt the opposite. I but it they... has me worried that there's going to be some sort of... I, the first thing that came to mind was Avatar. Oh, yeah, James people. Cameron's Avatar. And I'm yeah. just like, oh, please don't give us some ham-fisted <laughs> like, environmentalist message again. Oh, just oh. don't. Don't do that. Oh, I I looked at it and I was just like, the, the shot we saw of her at the episode 9 panel was of her in this field and I'm kind of yeah. like, she just looks like she's a homesteader and that's what they write around the homestead. Yeah. I mean, yeah, but, yeah. I mean, I, I, we don't have any real reason to think that they'll be doing. My, that. I'm not gonna lie. My doing, first, but. my first thought when I saw that was, why do you always pair the black people up for these shots? Like, <laughs> what's with that? Like, I mean, I don't have a problem with them because being thirty each other, years but. ago we only had one black guy in the galaxy. We got to get the population up, Chris. No, <laughs> but, but in the last set of stills that came out, you had Finn and Poe together. Yeah, I know, but. I know. It was just this moment of the only shot we've ever seen Jana in with someone else is with Poe. And it's just this sort of like, yeah. okay. I mean, you know. You mean Finn? Yeah, sorry, with Finn. And, yeah. and you know, I, I'm reading way too much into it, just doing that at all. <laughs> it's just like, I just had this moment of just like, they always do that. 
I mean, as long as they don't end up together, that would just be weird. Although I would <laughs> laugh if it was like he shifts to a different woman every single every single movie. That'd be funny. But Finn's a player. <laughs> I don't think we saw Rose at all in this Vanity Fair nope. shoot, did nope. we? Nope. Hmm. But we have seen her in other stills. Yeah, we uh, have from seen other her places. in the episode yeah. nine. But I, I wonder though. Oh, that actually, because we, when we talked about that before, I posited like she, her uniform looks different. And so yeah. I wonder if she has moved into a more command position. Yeah. So you've got Finn, who's still sort of one of the guys out in the field, like an actual yeah. like agent operative kind of thing. Which but would Rose, make a lot of sense after his arc in the last movie. Right. Yeah. Um, and then Poe, of course, that's where he's born and bred is out in the field. Um, but then, yeah, maybe Rose has switched to a more command position. And so she's like, well, I can't go out you know, carousing the galaxy with you guys. I've got to stay here and, you know, manage all the mechanics or whatever in the base, you know, yeah. whatever it is. Who knows? Yeah. Or maybe they're just leaving her out because they don't want to piss off fanboys who don't want to see her. <sighs> That's yeah. They're stupid. Oh boy. I, <laughs> whatever. Never mind. Yeah. That would be the worst option, but yeah. Uh, yeah well, I don't think they're that stupid. Are they? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Like the, the, the line that these, that Lucasfilm tries to walk between pandering to fan sensibilities and not con- being con- concerning themselves with fan sensibilities really seems to waver. <laughs> yeah. It's a curvy line. It, it is. <laughs> a wavy line. It depends on how closely they're looking at the charts when they make the decision. Yeah. Right? If I they don't... look too closely at all the fan backlash at having Rose, then I can see them making that decision. But again, it would be, it is terrible. So it's just, it depends yeah, on how, how hands-on they're being. Or maybe there's just going to be some huge reveal regarding Rose that they don't want to spoil it. All these. Could be. I highly doubt that. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, maybe. <laughs> yeah, maybe. All right. Turns so. out Rose was a Sith all along. That would be cool. <laughs> Rose I'm- is Sidious reincarnate. <laughs> oh, Ross, you had to ruin a perfectly good theory. <laughs> uh, oh, okay. man. Uh. Ross, Get out. Of In hey, other news. <laughs> yeah, if you guys could postulate weird, crazy theories, so can I. Thank you very much. Come on. You're the serious one, Ross. It's true. You're our straight man. <laughs> Sorry. It's true. I'll go back to my corner now. <laughs> um, next, we have exciting news for Knights of the Old Republic fans. It seems like we, I've been saying that a lot I recently. am a Knights of the Old Republic fan. I'm not a fan of this news. but Really? Yep. Oh, go ahead. Okay. We have news that a KOTOR movie is in the works. Now, uh... I kept seeing this all week, thinking that it was just rumor. Yeah, and, fans going, yeah. "Oh, we should make this," and then somebody said, "Oh, they are making it." Well, and with yeah. with Benioff and Weiss being the everyone talks about Benioff and Weiss and how they're finishing up Game of Thrones and how good they would be for a Kotor right. type series, and now they're being off. I figured everything had just kind of snowballed, and some yeah. less reputable uh, news outlet probably picked it up. But no, it turns out it's actually legit enough. Yeah, that uh, was MTV News reported an initial. They did an interview with Kathleen Kennedy where she said that they are in fact working on that, and they have. You've got the list right there. What's her the Leita? Oh, okay, I'm gonna butcher this name. I think it's Greek. Oh, maybe. Wow, that's a name. Leita or maybe Leita Kalogridis. Yeah, that's my guess. Kalogridis. It could also be a Star Wars name. I was gonna say that it could be a Star Wars name. <laughs> So Leita Caligridis is doing a treatment. She's writing a script for this, yep. which they've been describing as like, oh, it's in development. Da, 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 da. And it's like, okay, back it up, back it up. There's a script being written by one person, which is a very, very preliminary like stage. Yeah. They don't yeah. even, they're doing the first treatment of a possible story uh, movie here. So we'll see. Well, and I feel like that if Kathleen Kennedy has her finger on the pulse of Star Wars fans like I'm sure she thinks she does she would have to know saying this would absolutely light that subset of fans on fire yeah and that they're gonna almost have to do it now that it's oh yeah I, I doubt she'd be bringing it up if it weren't something that they're planning on moving yeah. forward with at some point yeah but for now we don't have any more information other than words are getting put on a paper and yeah yeah it is planned at some point. And later herself, I'm looking at her, I, like, because the first thing I did when I heard this is like, okay, who is this person? Yep. Can I trust them? And I pulled up her trust credits, them. and it was interesting. Like, the very first thing that Google mentioned was that she was involved with James Cameron's Avatar, and I went, no! Uh, <laughs> but it, she was an executive producer, so I was like, okay, she wasn't a writer on that. Yeah. Her writing includes Alita Battle Angel, which I haven't actually seen. I've heard mixed stuff. I've heard yeah. mixed. Yeah. Terminator Genesis. Eh. Shutter Island, okay, like not bad there. Um, Alexander, two thousand four. Alexander, oh. I was like, oh god, that's bad. This one really caught me off guard. Night Watch. So Night Watch 
from 2004 is a Russian, like, paranormal action movie. Like, it's kind of what you'd get if you crossed Supernatural with, like, The Matrix. Come it's, me intrigued. It's weird. <laughs> and I, it, it's, it's one, I've watched it, and it's, you know, it was moving fast enough that it was like, I'm only even following half of this because I was watching it in Russian. I didn't have any subtitles or anything in English. It's that it's interesting. Like I was just like she wrote she wrote that it's in Russian. Like it's a Russian film. It was filmed in in huh. Russian. So that's interesting. But then the other one that caught my eye is she is the creator and writer for Altered Carbon on Netflix. Oh really? Yes. I don't even know oh, what that wow. is. Altered Carbon is a very well revealed, a, a very well reviewed yeah. uh, science fiction series on Netflix. Huh. Very dark. Yes. Like full on graphic nudity, sex, all of that sort of stuff. Um, the, all the violence and the swearing, but very well written. And what did I, she do on that? She was she a was writer? the creator and writer. Oh. Like she, so as far as I can tell, she was the showrunner. So hmm. she's been involved with some less than stellar projects. Yes, but sometimes she's, as a writer. But yeah, the one that she had the most say. One of the most recent over. one where she's right. credited as the creator. That's interesting. Is an extremely well reviewed but very non Star Warsy sci fi. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe Kotor is gonna go dark. Yeah, we'll see. Well, That's, see, and this actually because. When I first heard the KOTOR news, I thought, well, maybe they just aren't ready to, like, make the official announcement, but this is probably Benioff and Weiss that are yeah, going to do something still, KOTOR. And maybe we also we'll have, by the way, in the news, they have also uh, BuzzFeed, in addition to confirming that Leto was the one writing this, also confirmed that they are considering a trilogy on, on this depending on how the first one does of course so this is so a it may be series. it may be one of the trilogies we still don't know that we've already got confirmed or it may be something else we just we That's really don't know because i thought maybe she so like kotor kennedy said kotor's we're doing a kotor movie and i thought oh well i, I this is probably just the first of the benioff and weiss yeah. trilogy yeah yeah and then we get this uh Caligridis lady coming in to write and i thought well wait a minute i thought benioff and weiss were like writing the other one as well probably so or maybe they're just going to direct it and produce it while she's writing maybe i don't know interesting but yeah or for it could me, even be totally unconnected we don't yeah, know could be. yeah for me i'm like i'm trying not to be pessimistic but part of me just instinctively goes okay one this is essentially a video game video game adaptation which historically is but not yes. a great bet do we know that though we don't know that no we're we're, we're in the setting you know, Knights of the and Old Republic in I heard. the I area. Think they were telling we don't know the story how much Kotor. they're using of any of that. So there is that. I'll grant that. And yeah. I am excited for that era. Yeah. And like not having played the game, I have no expectations either way yeah. for the story. But I'm going the idea of the setting. See, if it is was just cool. something in that setting that maybe just had Easter eggs referencing the yeah. events of the video game, but didn't ever like explicitly Crossover, get yeah. into that, I'd be thrilled. I yeah. would love that. I don't want them butchering one of my favorite video games. So, uh, and that, that's where I'm at, because I'm going the setting Adaptations of, are rarely you know, a great an army idea. of yeah. Sith versus the Old Republic Jedi in the time of the Old Republic. That sounds like a sweet setting for a Star Wars movie. Because mm -hmm. it, it sits in a really weird spot with Disney having undone all the old canon and then bringing stuff back in. You usually don't see... Well, actually, what I'm about to say has been less true recently. I was going to say, you don't usually see a lot of remakes on games, but recently that has actually been a trend with seeing remakes and disney could get in on that pie if they license a developer <laughs> reputable enough to actually do it yeah i'm sure they'll pick somebody good like ea well see that's the thing though <laughs> actually that's the thing is that it was originally that done was by for you BioWare. <laughs> yeah it was done by bioware who were bought by ea i know they were published through ea for a long yeah. time i don't remember if they were yeah. totally purchased out or not which again is now the ones that fellows with Disney. EA forced so, to do Anthem, despite that being nowhere near anything of their wheelhouse. The more I think about it, the more I see it possible that they could do a remake of the game and give it back to Bioware. I'm sure Bioware would love to do it again. It would have enough fan loyalty. I bet oh, it for would sure. still be decently. Oh, I'd pick it up. Yeah, yeah, it would be decently. Because Kotor fans are surprisingly rabid. Yeah, like they are devoted yes, fans. They are. You know. So I'd pick it up. It might just be so that I can come on here and uh, whine and moan about it. But <laughs> <laughs> whine was not my first choice of word there. But so, rating. <laughs> I'm going to go on record and say I bet this Kotor movie is not going to be based on the games. I bet they eventually redo their own at some point. I would hope so. But, but yeah, we'll see. Interesting. interesting. Yeah. Yep. yeah. 
That'll be pretty cool. I have one piece of news to spring on you guys. This Ooh. is... I didn't have time to really fact check it, so this is just <laughs> rumor. But the... So, well, the, okay, this first part is fact, right? Kathleen Kennedy and Bob Iger have come out on a couple of occasions here recently and said, like, for the foreseeable future, no more spinoff movies. Right. Yeah. Right? That That's... That is confirmed, right? That's yes. not questionable. Uh, the rumor that I saw, and this was from the same people that were reporting... Um, the uh this KOTOR news and whatever the the what was it the how we found this or whatever those people uh that we got this that's what it was yeah we got this but i didn't have a time to fact check it because i've been extremely busy these past couple weeks but um the rumor is that they're taking their ideas for the future spinoff movies and turning them into tv shows for disney plus so that we uh the room the specific ones that i saw were a kenobi series that just well, yeah, that I remember when like never that died. The and then yeah. also a Boba Fett series. And the Boba Fett series made me think, why would you do a Boba Fett series when you have The Mandalorian coming out? Right. The Mandalorian was essentially, well, we never got to make a Boba Fett movie, so let's do The Mandalorian, you know? Mm-hmm. And so I wonder, like, if that is true and Boba Fett series comes out, how are they going to differentiate that from The Mandalorian? How are you going to make it feel different from this other Mandalorian bounty hunter that we have, you know? Yeah. Did you look at any sort of, like, date or anything? No, this was, like, literally uh, no, this morning. No, these are both, I just looked them up, like they're both night. from, these were posted May 23rd, so for we're, we're really? recording on the 24th, this was yesterday. Yeah. I think I saw this late last night, like, really late last because night. Because back when, back when they had announced that they were canning the spinoff films... Shortly before they announced the Mandalorian, that were a lot of people were were throwing this around as rumors. Yeah, that they would do a Disney Plus thing with both of these properties. I feel like I feel like this might be just recycled or left over, unless there's Could some be. new details. That's, yeah, and that would that's my first instinct seeing this too, especially because I can't find it anywhere other than we got this covered. Yeah, and that's why I was saying like this is heavily in the rumor mm-hmm. side yeah. of things because uh, I didn't have time to look at it. And but. I've also been frustrated with We Got This Covered because they reported on the KOTOR stuff and said where the, who they were getting it from. Like, they referenced MTV News and BuzzFeed, but they didn't link. Yeah. To, mm-hmm. but, and, and that made me be like, are you just saying that Same these people crap, said things? Yeah. And so I had to go and search down the actual yeah. BuzzFeed link and the actual MTV News link so that I could go, okay, yes, this appears to be valid. Mm-hmm. But so it's frustrating here because there's no links to anything. They just said, oh, look, this is totally a thing. And I'm like, hey, I don't know if you're full of BS or not. Yeah. <laughs> so, yep. but see, and I'd be super surprised if at least the Boba Fett thing came to fruition because, yeah, there's no real differentiation. between Right. The two. And that's my thought. It's like, I would love to see more Boba Fett. But with the Mandalorian coming out, I'm not sure how you would go about doing that. Yeah. that gives me something different. I don't want more Boba Fett unless they give me a Boba Fett Captain Phasma series. <laughs> I want a really a aged, you know I re- want a really <laughs> aged Boba Fett and Captain Phasma. <laughs> and I want it to be a comedy buddy, co- evil buddy cop. That would be hilarious. <laughs> um, so they'll play bad cop, Worst cop? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that would be pretty funny. <laughs> what, uh, but what's left of Boba Fett's story to tell? Well, yeah, I don't know. So th- Boba Fett, a thousand years of digestion. Yeah, yeah for reals. But uh, no, Kathleen Kennedy said uh, that it was canon after they bought Star Wars that Boba, that Fett, Boba Fett does Fett makes escape. It out. Yeah. So uh. there's, there's two ways you could do a Boba Fett thing. You could do a Boba Fett... Um, in between where we see him end in Clone Wars and his death, quote-unquote, in Return of the Jedi, where we see him rise to prominence as the greatest bounty hunter. We see him take missions, have a couple episodes where he's planning, give us an execution episode where he finishes, you know, and just see him be a bounty hunter Yeah, in his prime. That, I think, would be probably the most fun. Um, but that sounds exactly like what the Mandalorian is doing. <laughs> right. Uh it would be cool early on because then you could maybe keep some Clone Wars people and like help again just further tie Clone Wars into the pre or the original trilogy timeline. You know, um, is uh, what's his name that did Young Boba? Is he the right age? Uh, yeah, yeah, he's uh, in his thirties or something like that is now. He? Yeah, mm. so but he, he won't he, he won't look quite like Tuili Morrison though. That's it's true. Um, then the other thing you could do is have Tamara Morrison play it and you do a Ooh, post Return agent, of the Jedi yeah. like okay the Buddy Empire cop with has Gwendolyn fallen. Christie come on <laughs> <laughs> like the Empire has fallen now 
and I'm a bounty basically the Mandalorian. Five years later, how does a ba- how does a Mandalorian bounty hunter well, make his way it, in the galaxy? Put it twenty five like, years later, and and put him with <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, so uh, but but that's it. did you hear my description though? I mean, that's the Mandalorian. Yeah. Post yeah. Return of the Jedi, you're trying to make your way in the galaxy. I just described the Mandalorian. So, so I don't so see here's how that the fits. Thing. What if the Mandalorian actually is Boba Fett? Eh, maybe. Eh. You'd have to ask, that, answer the question. Because they did. haven't given him a name. I know. They've been real careful with that. Uh, and <sighs> and he is carrying. I think that would just be so obvious. It's like, hey, we're going to tell you a story about a Mandalorian, a new Mandalorian, except that it's the only other Mandalorian around. Yeah. Yeah, I. I mean, it would be interesting, mostly just because I hadn't thought about that yet. But I, I, I'm agreeing with Chris. I would rather. I would rather have them introduce new people and let's tell new stories. Yeah. But that means that means we have a Mandalorian bounty hunter running around at the same time that we have Boba Fett running around. Yeah. And eventually Boba. this town won't be big enough for the two of them. Boba might be <laughs> limping. We don't know. Yeah. He yeah, might just know. be jetpacking That's around exclusively That's why I think, honestly, the best option for a Boba Fett movie would honestly be to have... Um, oh, crap. Now I can't think of the kid's name who played uh, young know. Boba. Yeah. Um, but to have him come back and it's like, oh, so he doesn't look like Tamara Morrison. Let's just, you know, yeah, that's we fair. look the other way on that one and let him play Boba Fett and we just do a Boba in his prime series, you know, of cool missions and whatever. I think that would be the best way to do a Boba. I want a, I want an aged Tawila Morrison playing Boba Fett Private Eye. <laughs> I want it to be shot in black and white, and I want yes, it to be a straight a film up noir film noir Boba thing Fett. Yes, <laughs> where they reveal that he's secretly Phasma's father, because apparently that's what Star Wars fans want yep. left and right. So, so secretly Phasma's father, and Rey is secretly her sister, but not by, but by <laughs> actually by Obi Wan and Boba and yes. Obi Wan don't get along. <laughs> They're both Chris, fighting over the same Write woman. that down. <laughs> send it in. Let's get this sucker made. Oh, shoot. So, who, who, excuse my Star Wars ignorance, but who is this Morrison person you keep talking about? Tawila Morrison to? played. Yeah, he's the actor who Django. played Django Fett. Oh, okay. So, technically, Boba Fett should look exactly like him, but, eh, you know, we could look the other way. Yeah. yeah. So, different actors. Especially yeah. because in the Clone Wars, they modeled young Boba Fett off of the voice actor who played young Boba in episode two. Right. So like huh. they, you know, they intentionally kind of went that way anyway. And we're all just going to go. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> he had you know? some, he had some yeah. plastic surgery exactly. so that he would not look like the most recognizable face in as, the galaxy. <laughs> yeah, <for reals. laughs> Have you seen this man? Yes. <laughs> About twenty of them, right over there. <laughs> uh, and the kids Except in this Logan, galaxy, Daniel Logan. That's yeah, right. Like, except in this galaxy, it's Duraplaz surgery. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I think his I face think, is indestructible. I mean, he looks close enough that yeah. it wouldn't be super jarring. You know. So I mean, oh yeah, it would. Not bad. Yeah, like it's not exactly, but again, some good it's makeup. Close enough could, that yeah, you would just that. be like, okay, whatever. It's yeah. supposed to be Boba Fett, just like Alden Ehrenreich is supposed to be Harrison yeah. Ford. Yeah, okay, yeah, you know, it's not. It's close enough. You just. Mm-hmm. You just do it. Maybe he got punched in the face it. one too many times. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And- Although I or like one too the, few times. <laughs> I like Chris's yeah. idea though that he has plastic surgery, which means, like, as like a seven year old, he got plastic surgery because by the time he's like ten in Clone Wars, his face is completely healed, looks totally different. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> oh boy, this kid recognized all those clones and went crap. Everybody's going to know who I am the second they see me. Yeah. Any of those clones sees me, they're going to go, hey, that's me a couple <laughs> Maybe years it was Django's <laughs> idea where he's like, look, I can't have you if I like die, these other guys. Here's the, yeah. Like, you know, here oh, yeah, maybe go. Django did that. Way did it on his own. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's horrible. Uh, wow. Yeah. We bring up Tune in this questions. episode for uh, discussions about child abuse. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> wow. <sighs> okay. Should we move on? Uh, Get into the actual meat of the episode. I think we've talked out the news. Okay. So for this episode is going to be kind of fun. We've done, I believe, one of these episodes before. Yes, with the video games. So this is a tier episode. So what we have here, we're going to tier some spaceships. And we're going to get into the criteria in just a second. Um, So we've got 30 ships. So we're going to place... 10 of them in tier 1, which means these are like your favorite ships. These ships are just the, the best and whatever. we're all going to talk about why we put them if there. If you could have a ship to fly, this it would be It would be it. one of them, yeah. yes. Then there's tier 2 where it's like, these are pretty cool. 
not necessarily my favorite, but I can see why other people would like these. These are these are good, solid choices these for a ship. Adequate, yeah. Yeah. And then tier three is kind Which of like so means that probably we should have those, but <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> They're all tier two. Surprise, Chris. <laughs> and then tier three is kind of like either it's a pass if you really don't like it, or it's like, you know, it's just not my thing. I don't yeah. know. It's just I've got some reasons for disliking these, and some of these are very arbitrary. Yes! Yep, exactly. (laughs) As are all decisions on this show. (laughs) Okay, so uh, the ships that we chose, because I don't know if you guys know this, but there's a lot of ships in Star Wars. There's a few. Might be news for some of you. Yeah. Uh, So we had to narrow it down. Uh, it would just it would have got out of hand. I mean, it almost got out of hand as it is. Yeah, yeah we ended up with thirty. Ships <laughs> Even with here. our criteria to narrow things down, it was almost out of hand. Um, but it's just it gets crazy. So we decided on like smaller starcraft, like yeah. star fighters and like small freighters, like the Millennium Falcon. Yeah. So basically, it can't have a crew bigger than like five or six people at like the absolute top. Yeah. So, like, um, basically, I think where we kind of drew the line here is Millennium Falcon around that range and smaller is good. Yep. Ten to four that you see at the beginning of episode is too large. Yep. And so the, there's some, a little bit of gray area big. in there. Goes yeah, on but. to cruisers too big. So to put it in terms that some of you might understand, Fantasy Flight Games X-Wing game. This yeah. is how I pitched it to Ross and Chris for the criteria is they have, like, their regular base ships. Then they have large base ships like... Yeah. Uh, the Millennium Falcon, the Ghost, um, and then they have epic ships. If it's epic ships, it's a no-go. So again, you're looking at a crew of five or six people at the absolute tops or smaller. Yeah. And then that that's the criteria. I did just realize we do not have on here the Clone Wars troop transport from... Oh, yeah, the L-A-T? Yeah, yeah. which is a very, very notable one. Maybe just toss that in Wait, at the end. And- which one? The troop transport has the slats on the side that yeah. can open up oh, once you're in atmosphere. The gunship, the clone the gunship. gunship. But that's not space worthy, is it? Uh, it is. Well, it is. some of them you, are. We see so it. So the cl- early yeah. ones have actual open air slats, mm-hmm. but then they developed a space faring one. Yeah. Later that okay. has those slats yeah. filled in. And I've later. never seen them in in anything canon go any further than hey we're gonna drop down to the planet from that's here. That's pretty but, much where it is. Is your star destroyer pulls into yeah. orbit and they launch those out. Yeah, anyway, fair now, and that's, project. but that is one of the criteria here is that these are explicitly StarCraft. Yeah, these are like, Starfighters. So yeah. no speeder bikes, yeah. no, no air speeders, no snow speeders yeah, from snow Empire speeders. Strikes Back. Um, um, yeah. So if it's this explicitly it a craft not worthy. meant to go into space. And that's going to be a real surprise on at least one of these. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was shocked. <laughs> yeah. So uh, are we ready? Yeah, ready let's do this? do this. Okay. So, the first ship that we're going to talk about is the classic X-Wing. Yes, sir. Oh, and by the way, so some of these have multiple variants, like there's the old X-Wing, the, the T-70 or whatever. T-65. X-wing, T-65. Mm-hmm. But we're also including the new one. Which from is the T-75. The T-75. So, basically, the X-Wing and all iterations thereof. Yes, and on, in some of these, it's like, yeah, you could argue that those could be different or that some of the ones we've got here could be same. Yeah, you know. But yeah, we're whatever. arbitrary. <laughs> yeah. We've so. only got 30 slots here, and even that was pushing <laughs> Just, it. Yeah. Really. So the X-Wing. Yeah, the X-Wing. Tier one for me? Me as well. Tier two. Oh. Explain so, your reasoning. I know. I know. Right off the bat, making Ross angry. <laughs> <laughs> Kyler, at the end of this episode... <laughs> We will still be friends, unlike our last tier show. <laughs> you that hurt Ross. That hurt me deep inside. Yeah, you say that now until he puts the Millennium Falcon in tier three. I know, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> we'll get there. <laughs> no, so I like the X Wing. I really do. Mm-hmm. Um, it is a really cool looking ship. I like ships that have moving parts. So the fact yes. that the S foils can can you know uh, come apart is just way cool. But pretty much the only reason it's not in tier one is there are other ships that I like better. Oh, like it's a, yeah. it's like upper tier two, almost in tier one. If mm-hmm. I, if we had eleven slots, it would probably be in there. Right, that's fair. But it's I mean it's the classic X wing. Yeah, exactly. Like it's it? iconic. So, that's why yeah. I was like I can't put this anywhere else. It is the yep. X wing. It is the reason we have numbered ships all over the all over the place in Star Wars. Yeah. Yep. Or lettered ships. Sorry, Chris. Now hold on. I'm just looking at your paper and noticing you didn't actually write down what I tier. did. 
put all of these in tears in advance. Okay. It's on my phone yeah, here. It's on my oh, phone. okay. Because <laughs> we're not going to do the same thing as last time. <laughs> we just I, went for it. I could not do that with 30 ships. No, yeah. I could not yeah. manage that. Yeah. Okay. So, Chris, so, why, why is the X-Wing tier one for you? Iconic. Yep. Yep. It's and it's in. I mainly. I a lot of these I can't approached as well. I've flown these in games. Mm-hmm. How did I like that in the game? <laughs> and the X wings. It's it's the standard. Like we're, this is your middle range. Like it's not great at anything, but it's good at everything. It's your jack of all trades ship in most games. Yeah. And just yeah, nice, comfortable, familiar. Well, and usually that's uh, being a jack of all trades is a disadvantage, but it usually ends up being an advantage in the case of yeah. Nixon because he does everything just a little bit better yeah than most. well and it's also it's that that's where you usually start in any given game right yeah. you start with the middle ground and then you get the more extreme extreme versions yeah. later mm-hmm. that are better at one thing or the other but you're yeah it's your it's yep. your capable all-terrain so i i did my rankings based on what i'd prefer to fly and yeah, uh, i did some of that too if i'm in an x-wing i'm probably going to be in fighting something which you know is precarious and it seems to, I kind of like that balance where it's a shielded ship, it's a little bit yeah. beefier, it's got, you know, a better armament, it's decently maneuverable, so, you know, it's yep. it's yep. kind of what you want all the way around. A lot better than... I did the same thing, but most of my reviews of how much I would like to fly it are based on how it flew in video games. Right. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yep. All right, number two, the B-Wing. Mm-hmm. Shall I go first, apparently, sure, since yeah. you're both looking at me? This is tier three for me. Really? I do not like the B-Wing. Wow. And and I the why is very simple because even as a kid I would see the B wing in materials and in the movies and stuff and all I could ever think about is that thing looks effing impossible to pilot. <laughs> like, you've got this you've got this little cockpit and then you've got this massive these massive wings hanging off one side, and I'm like that's like for comparison that's like let's take a stretch limo. Only we're going to somehow reorganize this so that that it drives sideways. So you're actually facing sideways with and but you're still sitting on one end of the vehicle and you're going to try and navigate that around places like think think about how we have to favor the right side of the car as it is because we're driving around with the steering wheel on the left side. And those things are made to be narrow in the direction they need to be. If you're driving something that's jutting out on your right side like that or any side like that, that's just that that's unworkable like you couldn't fly that function in any sort of functional way unless there's nothing around you get in a dogfight you're screwed well and see that's the thing though is that the b-wing tends to be shown in a lot of different roles that it shouldn't be in so usually and it was original canon the b-wing was a bomber mm-hmm. um, yep. and so it's supposed to be slow but Still it's supposed is. to be yeah but like like you see in rebels like it's dogfighting against tie fighters which it should not be able yeah. to do yeah right, in that class um, and so that's that's part well, of my problem. Well, in the, the current experimental B wing, the current Wikipedia um, <laughs> entry basically says that this is a special forces kind of thing where it's like it has a couple. Spe- I don't remember what any of them were, but it's like this is used for like it's used for attacking capital ships. It's used right. for this, that, and the other. And it's so it's not made for any of those. It's and I'm like, okay, sure, whatever justification you want to get around that ridiculously wonky design. Yeah, sure. Well, it's still tier three for me. Um, I put it tier two. I mean, it it is cool. It's a two seater craft. It does have a little like turret on top that you know you can, which is nice. But uh, yeah, it's just I don't know. Although I will say, original trilogy B wing is better than Clone Wars B wing. Clone Wars doesn't have a B wing. It. Uh, I'm sorry, maybe it's Rebels that had the B-Wing. Yeah. The, where it had the actual, they'd put the... No, yep. wait a minute. There was, there was one episode where they had B-Wings. Not in Clone Wars. Pretty sure. Uh, anyway, because they, they showed it with its coverings on that uh, they looked really dumb. No, they had the B-Wing in Rebels, but... Um, no, I'm, I'm certain I've, I've actually seen it somewhere that had the covering. I thought it was in that episode where they're flying through that nebula in Clone Wars. Nope, that's Y wings. Yeah, when that's that through. is actually. I've watched that episode recently. Y wings are going through the nebula. Wait a second. Oh, are you picturing the I, right one? I've been talking. <laughs> I was wondering when you said about the turret on top. I was like, yeah, yeah. when you said about the bomber too. I was like, I don't. So, I don't, so B wing well, is a bomber. That's right. Well, it's it's but, for attacking capital ships, but yeah. the bomber is the Y wing. Yeah. 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 Uh, I've been thinking Y wings and talking about B wings. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's okay. I'm sorry. 
do we want to just cut all that and jump back? Or? No, let it's me your prerogative. <laughs> I, know. I know it really is. You're the one with the unlimited power. I know. I I I'm a big enough man to know I've made a mistake and let everyone enjoy my my foolishness. Congratulations Sorry. on your great manhood. Yeah, thank you. Uh, B wing is still tier two <laughs> because that's what I have written on my sheet, and that's I'm sure it was right. But uh, um, no, that's right. It actually looked a lot more awesome in that episode of Rebels than yeah. in most places you see it. So the B wing is the the cross, yes, shaped mm-hmm. thing. cross with the big cockpit on one yes. end, and it kind of spins around that cockpit. And now your comment it. makes more sense about having the stuff off to the side. <laughs> yeah, the B wing is all, the Y wing is all behind, thinking it's yeah. being okay. Oh, Ross, <sighs> I wish I could have been in your head to see that. It's, <laughs> okay. Yep. Yeah, like B wings. B wings are cool. Would have been tier one had I not had other things I wanted in tier one. So tier two. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Kyler, where's your B wing? Tier one, easy for me. Oh yeah. I ever since I was a little kid, I love the way it looks. I agree with you, Chris. Very impractical. I don't care. It still looks super cool. <laughs> Uh, the B-Wing is one of my favorite Rebel ships. It is really, really cool mm-hmm. uh, looking because not only does the cockpit spin so that the ship can rotate while keeping the cockpit stationary, yeah. but also then you have the movable S-foils as well, which are way cool. Um, I I just, I like the way it looks. I think vertical ships in you know sci-fi look pretty cool. And so it I is do agree vertical. on some of those, yeah. So that's, that's, that's one of my cool. favorite parts of Solo is that uh, yeah. uh, Dryden Ross's ship. Dryden ship looks it's really cool. cool. Yeah. So yeah, tier one Skyscraper for me. Skyscraper ship. Cool. All right. So next we have the A-Wing. Yep. And for those and that I'm, may not know... This is the wedge-shaped one that you yep. see in Return of the Jedi. Crashes into the yes. computer. This is the one that's shaped like an A. Yeah. <laughs> the Y-wing is the one shaped like a Y. The X-wing is the one shaped like an X. The U-wing is shaped like a U. And the B-wing is shaped like none a of the above. <laughs> yeah, it's a yeah. lowercase T. <laughs> I still can't believe I did that. All right. A-wing. We'll be Ross. going over A-wing. the letters with Ross later. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Apparently I didn't learn my alphabets. Mm-hmm. Uh, also tier two. Again, because there are other things. What? I know. But see, the I, thing, that's shocking to the me. The thing that, that I don't that like about the A-Wing. So the A-Wing is classed as an interceptor. Yes. Meaning it goes really fast, yep. which when yep. you do that, you sacrifice uh, shields. shields. Well, shields and, and, and armor. armament, yeah. So it tends to not survive as long. Yeah, but it's cool. Eh. AF, bro. It's fine. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, but, uh, I mean, all the rebel ships were shielded, which is nice. Um, and it's fast, and it is, you know, decently cool looking. Although... I don't know. It's a little bit goofy, I think. Little, I yeah. love... A, a, I'm going to just... No, no, this. go. Yeah. I was tier one. we'd go around. Tier yeah. one for me on the A-Wing. It is super cool. I loved the way it looked as a kid, uh, although not as much as the B-Wing. Um, the fact that it's really, really fast, right, is just, it's just way cool, you know? Uh, and then the fact that it's the thing that takes down Super Star Destroyer was always pretty cool uh, as a kid. Well, as a kid <laughs> looking I at mean, it... No, I know now, of course, that it's been barraged by a whole fleet. But, but you know, I mean, like, it's still kind of a fluke. I it's mean, also, it was, yeah, it's, I don't know, it took it, just, it out inadvertently. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah but. it was just cool. I, I like the A-Wing. And then plus, um, like the other Interceptors in Star Wars Armada, the A-Wing is fearsome. Mm-hmm. It uh, It's a good ship. And those fetching stupid Rebel Aces... <laughs> Shara Bay and stuff. Yeah. Oh, they're so good in those A-Wings. Uh, my A-Wing is Tier 3. Yeah, I and this and this is based solely on one thing. They are super fast, low shields, which means anytime I flew in in a game, I died fast. Very just, yeah, very <laughs> like I, did, I hated it. I hated those stupid A wings because I'd hop in one and all of a sudden I'd be like, okay, I'm just gonna drive over there. Whoa! How did I get here so fast? Crap! There's something in my way. Crash! Yeah. And that was that. And oh, I hated see? them. Uh-huh. And they had little, very little firepower. They didn't do a whole lot. Although I did like the seeking missiles in the Battlefront games, I would use them for that. Yeah. See, but, and I playing whatever it was that old X Wing game. I can't remember the name of it still. Yeah. But. uh the A-Wing was my favorite because it was so fast. That means those interceptors couldn't hunt me down. Yeah, uh, that's fair. Like, I could actually keep up with the See, interceptors. Yeah, when I was in that. an A-Wing, I didn't need the inter- interceptors to hunt me down. I'd do the job for them. <laughs> 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 and that's why I hate it. Also, I feel like design-wise, compared to most of the ships on here, it's the most pedestrian, I feel like. It's yeah. pretty, like, it's it's a spaceship, but like, at least the B-Wing stands out as, like, that's unusual. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, and I, I don't like that bubble cockpit on top. I think oh, is what I annoys think it's me way the most. Cool looking. It looks like a, it yeah. reminds me of like a jet fighter cockpit, like an F-16 or something well, in, like in, that, or yeah. F-15. But still, I don't like those cockpits yeah. either. 
Anyway, Maybe next on like the list. Ross. Did you ever think of that? <laughs> That's just fine. Uh, <laughs> the next on the list is the Y wing. Yep. Yes. Which is the actual this is the Y-shaped one shaped like one. a T. Yes. <laughs> the which, turret on top. <laughs> which makes the Death Star run in A New Hope that you see most frequently. In Negative. It just impacted on the, the surface. surface. Yes. That's a uh, Gold Leader who says. Was that, that Gold Leader? Yep. Yep. Because I thought Red Leader says that one. Nope. Gold Leader is. He's the one leading the anyway, attack. Anyway, it's the one shaped like the, a Y. Yep. Yeah. It's got the two... It's white like, and yellow yeah, is its yellow. color scheme. Mm-hmm. Or, well, dirty white. <laughs> Gray yeah. and yellow. <laughs> is, it, it should have been white at one point, yep. but it's very old. Yep. Um, so, we we see these in A New Hope, and they are repurposed fighters from the Clone Wars. Yep. Yes. And we see Y-Wings in the Clone Wars very the Clone early yeah. on, series. like season one, yeah. I think. Or season maybe two. two. Yeah. Yep. And they have... See, and that's that, that was my thing, why I don't like them as much. First of all, they're a super slow and stupid bomber. So slow. Well... But, uh... But they were new and fast in the Clone Wars, which I liked them showing, like, oh my gosh, here's this new bomber, this new piece of technology that is top of the line at that that point, Um, and now it's aged and not. I think that's that's coming down to animators and storytellers not actually respecting the roles that were established originally for them, because they've always been a bomber, right? Bombers are always slow. Um, and less maneuverable and, and just beefy, which is, is fine, yeah. which is why they survive. But again, you see Y Wings doing things that they shouldn't do. In the Clone Wars? Yeah. And also in Rebels. No, you see them definitely performing less well against like vulture droids and stuff in Clone Wars okay. than you do like, you know, the Jedi Starfighters or the other ones that were related to the other clone fighters. The one in Rebels that has Ezra flying around in a Y Wing taking on regular TIE fighters. Yeah. None of that should have happened. <laughs> it bothers me so much. That's fair. So where what was your tier well, for this? I don't remember here. Tier three. Not tier necessarily three. though, Ross. Like slower planes can turn tighter than faster planes. So a TIE fighter may be faster and more maneuverable, like more well, more maneuverable for its speed, but a, t- a Y Wing going slower is gonna be able to make tighter turns that is gonna be able to to close that loop behind TIE Fighters. But it's going to have a harder time keeping <clears throat> up in general with well, things, though, with the other fighters. But Ezra so. also has the Force. Yeah, I It's know. also a Tier 3 for me. Apparently, I just don't like Rebel Ships, man. Um, <laughs> I, uh, Yeah, and it's it all comes down to I hated playing them because they were so slow, <laughs> mm-hmm. and they you only had one like blaster shot at the front of each, and yeah. it's like, bombs are nice and all, but man, they're so freaking slow. Yeah. Uh, so it is also tier three for me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I would have liked to put it in tier two, but there are just a few more ships that I wanted to put in there. Um, I like the Y wing well enough. Uh, it's, I like it as being iconic. You <laughs> yeah, know? it's yeah. based on like I think the Dauntless from uh, uh, from World War Two, um, which was a fighter bomber. Yeah. Um, for the U.S. Navy, it had a big torpedo on the or a bomb on the bottom and it had a rear gunner as well yeah. so you had the mate the pilot who had the forward facing cannons and then you had a small turret on the rear to get anybody that's coming in behind you because it is slower and less maneuverable okay. mm-hmm. and that's that's the inspiration. Oh, and here is here is this is a small nitpick but it has always kind of bothered me about the y-wing that it's like this is a bomber but unlike other bombers that we have on this list you can't actually see any area where it keeps the bombs it's the just bombs. like somehow yeah. manages to be sleek and narrow yeah. and yeah. keep them in there and i was always like ah it's, it's supposed to be big and beefy, but it's really not. Yeah. Well, it doesn't have as big a payload as some of the other bombers. That's fair. But and I believe it bomber well, means that it has, like, some proton torpedo tubes inside. And so that's mm-hmm. where it's launching from. Just like the X-Wing has proton torpedo tubes. Fair. But uh, anyway. Yeah, tier three. Yeah. Let's move on. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Number five. Number five. The U-Wing from Rogue One slash uh, later, like, season four of Rebels. <laughs> yeah. So, pretty good. Where you and, got it, Kyler? Uh, for me, I have it in tier three. It is a cool ship. I like the idea of, like, a drop ship. Yeah. That's pretty cool. And it is a cool-looking design. And I like, mm-hmm. again, that the wings can change position and, and stuff out, yeah. um and that's pretty cool i really like the attack helicopter idea that we see on scarif where they you know they pop open the doors and they're got the big yeah. machine gun shooting at mm-hmm. crap like i'm like that is really cool but compared to i everything else kind of like you were saying it's like what would i rather fly i'd rather fly <laughs> a lot of other things 
right. besides a U-Wing. That's fair. You know? I put it tier two, mainly because I haven't ever flown this in a game, so I have no strong <laughs> feelings against it. Um, I do I do have a bit of a problem where it's like, I think it's cool, yeah, the whole S-foils folding out and everything, except that it's, again, one of those things where I was like, that suddenly becomes far less wieldy as soon as you... Yes. And it explicitly states yeah. in the Wikipedia entry that they fold out to allow for greater maneuverability. So I'm like, so they fold out to allow you to maneuver better but not through any narrower spaces like that that right. they're them being folded out should make maneuverability worse logically and see every time i watch rogue one and they launch off in that that u-wing from uh the base mm-hmm. when they were they're first going on the mission and then it folds out its wings and it starts flying by the temple every time i'm like oh he's gonna hit it yeah, and, it never does. <laughs> yeah, and it's also exactly. funny because I look at it and I'm like, I like, I like it. I it, like, I don't have anything against it. I like that they gave the rebels a like designated drop ship, and that's handy. Yeah, it's a cool utility ship. Yeah, mm-hmm. but it's also one that I look at and I'm like, how is that a drop ship? Like, it does not look like it should be large enough for that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's misleading visually. But yeah, I think it, it looked like it would fill more of a role of like a combat. Yeah. Getting a small unit in, well, because like, it's lines, based sort of off like Black Hawk helicopters, yeah. so it's not supposed to be delivering like entire companies yeah. or yeah, whatever. Sure. It's literally yeah. like here's a strike team of like ten guys right. that can yeah. be shoulder to shoulder in here for a small amount of time, right? And then they jump out, yeah. You know, but. yep, yep. So tier two for me. Yep. Um, I also tier two. Cool. Okay. On so. Oh, so we've only all agreed on one so far. That was the poor Y wing. Yeah. Way down in tier three. Oh, man. All right. Here's another classic. The TIE Fighter. Your basic yes. standard TIE Fighter slash the basic standard TIE Fighter from the First Order, which yes. is way cooler. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, but I'm in my mind, I'm just thinking just the original TIE from the original yeah. series. Yeah, sure. See, you know, and I would almost separate those two because there are so many improvements to the First Order's TIE there, Fighter. There are, and we're going to have the same problem when we talk about the Interceptor. Mm-hmm. Um but it would have just gotten too crazy. And then yeah, it's like, no, then why sure. don't we separate the X-Wings? Yeah. And they're almost exactly the same. So we just didn't. Yeah. I put TIE Fighter Tier 2. I did too. It's iconic, so I almost wanted it higher. But the whole explicitly designed to be functional by sacrificing <laughs> yep. the welfare of the pilot. Yep. Yeah. Its one job is to absorb space bullets. <laughs> yes. And that was like, yeah, that's going to have to knock it down to Tier 2 And for me. that's how I use them in Armada as well. Oh, see, yeah. And I, I tier three it because this was definitely went down to the would I like to fly it. Yeah. And the people that made it don't even care enough to give you a proper life support system. You yep. have to actually have it on your suit. Yeah. No way. No way <laughs> yeah. am I using it. It that. tells you something about expected pilot survivability. Yes. <laughs> well, and, and, besides, and besides in an Imperial installation, how are you supposed to get in and out of the stupid thing? You know? Uh, well, they do show us that in Rebels, which made me really happy because the only way to do it is with massive series of ladders. Right. Yeah. Because of the wings. But again, you're only going to have that in an Imperial installation. So if I'm just flying somewhere and have to yeah. land a they seal. show it. I believe they show that in the Captain Phasma comic, though. They don't they have, uh, they they have land like a, a ladder. Or yeah, and they have a ladder extends. that like extends down. But it is problematic. But I was yes. happy to see them at least address the issue in Rebels, uh, where we get hobby actually Luke's co-pilot in the mm-hmm. airspeeder who dies and wedge. Mm-hmm. we see and wedge we see them defect together from a, uh, an imperial flight academy mm-hmm. and so we get to see them actually like get in and out of the tie fighters and they've got like a, a catwalk basically that has ladders that dip down into mm-hmm. the, yeah. the cockpits and stuff so i was like oh well, the first order has that. their recessed like terraces yeah, which too. i think looks yeah. way cooler. was yeah was really nice. really cool idea clever um but yeah tier two for the tie fighter it's a cool looking ship it is super iconic mm-hmm. but that there sound, are a like, lot yeah. More, yeah, and the sound is you. It does uh, strike yeah. a little fear into your heart. So, alrighty, and Ross, you did tier, tier three. Two. Oh, tier yeah, three. So, okay. Yeah. So next we have the Tie Interceptor. Yep. So this is the Tie Fighter that has the wings curved in, yep. kind of like Vader's ship at the end of the first one. But it also has them coming to a point Pointy. at the front yep. with guns on the points. Oh, they look so it's cool. It's much faster, <laughs> and it's yeah. This is probably. If not number one, probably top five, at least for me. This is tier one all the way. The the pointed wings mm-hmm. and their little daggers, you know. It's yeah. got better weapons, way more maneuverable. It's fast as crap. Uh, it's a way, way, way cool ship. I love it in every game I ever play. I uh, You know, from Empire at War on the computer to any of the, the single-seater yeah. games, you know, the as soon as I could play, um, 
as an interceptor, I would. <laughs> and then in Armada too, oh, those sweet Imperial aces in those interceptors. Sienna Re, oh, she's so good. <laughs> I also put this as tier one, uh, even though despite the fact that I crashed in at like I did with the A-Wing, it wasn't quite as bad because a lot of the games where I crashed the A-Wing a lot were games where you didn't play as the Empire. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lucky Interceptor. Oh, also and, because I wanted the iconic uh, A tie up there. And, mm-hmm. and included in the Interceptor category is the technically different tie silencer. Yes. This is Kylo Ren's tie interceptor, yes. only bigger. Oh uh, yeah, the the, t- the tie silencer, it's bigger, it's black painted. Yep. It's got a red the cool light red on the stripes cockpit. On yeah. It and the, yeah, yeah, the red cockpit, the red tinted cockpit. And it has its guns inside the gap between the yeah. things instead and of out on the tips. And it's got missiles in does. it, which is pretty cool. Yeah. So so that's included here with the Titan Interceptor. Yeah. Yes. E- and both of those ships are tier yeah. one. Like, even if they were separated, I would yeah. have had both tier of one them for in me. tier one. Russ? They're just way cool looking. You know, I regret putting this where I did. No. Say tier one, Ross. I put it tier one. Yeah! <laughs> I, I regret putting it there because it's not, it's not enough of an improvement over oh. a regular TIE Fighter because it still wasn't shielded. Sure. It still didn't have but the look at it, though. I mean, cockpit. talk about cool-looking Imperial ships. But see, and the see, bent wings with the points, like, it looks menacing. And that's oh, why that's why it so did end cool. up tier one, is because, like, that was what I went through first. Yeah, went, no regrets, Ross. Ross. Those are pretty cool. Yeah. One. But pretend now, uh, about pretend it, like, it's the silencer. You'd fly, you'd fly the silencer. I'd fly the silencer. That's yeah. true. Yeah. Because yeah. so. <laughs> it's included in this one, Ross. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. All right. Next is the TIE Defender. Another tier one for me. Way cool. I always liked the three-winged look and it's got the points on it as well it's got shields ross yep and this missiles. one is from rebels by the way if you have yes seen that. Uh, so originally it was eu something or other i think it was still thrones project in the eu i can't remember but uh, so i don't, I don't recall know. it from the throne box, I, don't, but. I don't know where it came from in the eu i just know it was an eu ship and then rebels recanonized it yes under i think thrawn. i think it does still get associated with thrawn but i don't remember it showing up well no i think i think it does show up in those books um, uh, I could be. It's been a long time since I read yeah. those. So, well, and yeah, when I'm I read looking them at the time, up, I'm looking you, it up on Wikipedia right yeah. now. So, when I read them at the time, I actually wasn't as big into ships, and so I don't really remember yeah. the details. But the um, Tide Defender's way cool. Tier yeah. one for me. For I've sure. I've also tier one it, um, and I don't regret that one. Yeah, tier three. Now, I what, have, Chris? Really? Yeah, I'll tell no. you why in a moment. Let Man. Russ finish. Um, I've always wondered kind of what they do classify this ship as, though, because it's it's not a bomber. It's, it is it's a fast. multi-role fighter. Okay. So it's basically, it fills the job of like the F-15 back in like the 90s when it was top of the line. Mm-hmm. So it can carry bombs if it right. needs to go bombing. It can hold its own in a dogfight. Right. Even though there are necessary, you know, maybe better ships out there, it can hold its own. Mm-hmm. It, it can do a little bit of everything and it can do a little bit of everything better than average. So it, it sits more in the X-Wing category then. Yes. Yeah. 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 From what I'm reading here. I cannot find where it appears. It's a little the less canon, hardy, the like a little stuff. less durable than the X-wing, mm-hmm. um, because at but least it's also as far faster, as I, isn't it? it is faster. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, it's it's just sort of a a jack of all trades that is slightly better than average. Right. So yeah. I this is one I, when we were preparing for this episode, we just pulled these up. Uh, I pulled these up one by one in Wikipedia just to make sure I knew what each of them were because a lot of them didn't look familiar. TIE Interceptor was one that I had no recollection of ever seeing before. I have no recollection the of TIE Interceptor? Place. Or do you mean TIE Defender? The Defender, sorry. Okay, yeah. The Defender here. I was like, you just praised the Interceptor. What are yeah, you talking sorry. about? Yeah, <laughs> sorry. So I pulled this up and I looked at it and I went, well, that looks really stupid. Yeah, it looked real weird. <laughs> like, I, I looked gonna, at it and I went, this is what Kylo Ren should have been flying. Because it really looks it's like the darker, edgier. Exactly, it really looks like someone's like, "Well, my Tie Fighter has three, three foils on yeah. it, not just two, uh, and they're inverted outward." Even though that makes the whole design not as compact, look yes. weirder, not function as well. Like I looked at it and I was like, "That looks. That really looks like." some 10 year olds drawing of what so, their TIE fighter would look like because it's so much cooler than everyone else's so TIE take, fighter. <laughs> take the curved wings of the interceptor that have the points on them. Yep. Flip them inside out and give them a third one that comes out the top. Yep. Yeah. And depending on the image you're looking at, they will also be further out from the cockpit. Yes. And it just yeah. looks really wonky. Yeah. It looks like a Zelda villain. Like, <laughs> 
<laughs> like those are going to close in to cover the eye before you can shoot it. You have to distract it some other That's way. Right. <laughs> oh, what a great And reference. so I took one look at that and went, oh, I can't do anything but tier three that. Sorry. <laughs> having not seen Rebels, having not having no other context yeah, but just looking at Rebels, this. I think, will probably yeah. bump it up a little for you. Um, but it's I like that ship, and especially in Armada. One of the best aces in Armada is Azmeric Steel, a, a TIE Defender. He's yeah. great. Um, they did have defenders in most of the older games, too, though. Yes, um, they did. So you haven't had the opportunity to fly that ones I've played, apparently. Oh, uh, they have in uh, Empire at War, they have the TIE Defender. It's got yeah, the, even in the yeah, ion gun. I, I, never played, I never played as the Empire in Empire at War. I was always playing against you guys, and so yeah, the, I yep. only had one option. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And the consortium was obviously the best choice for me anyway. So. Yep, exactly. Um, but I'm, I'm, OP I'm pretty nonsense. sure... I'm pretty sure it makes an appearance in. I was thinking more of the criminals, but yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> in the X-wing OP versus criminal TIE nonsense. Fighter. X-wing versus. It TIE might fighter. have, and I just never played that yeah. far because I didn't. Yeah. I didn't play a lot of all of those games, so I played yeah. some and enjoyed it. Mm. But. Oh boy. Yep. All right. Next, we have the Lambda class shuttle. So that is the white three-winged shuttle we see yeah. in um, uh, Return of the Jedi. Is what the, uh, Empire, the Emperor Tidarium comes to the stolen. yeah. That's what they fly the in that they've stolen. It's what the Emperor lands on yep. the Death Star with. And Vader. Yep, and Vader. And Vader yep, yep, exactly. Um, I love this ship. It's one yep. of my favorites. Ditto. Tier two though. Oh really? Again, this is one of those where it's like I'd like to put it in tier one, but there are others that I think are more deserving. But I this is it, one of my favorite looking ships. In I put Star it in Wars. tier one mainly for the iconic nature yeah. of it. The, it is so cool. It's one of my favorite Lego sets that I've ever got. Was the the shuttle mm. just yeah. awesome? Uh, I I tier one this because, and I realize it's just because I have a weird fascination with shuttles. <laughs> All right, and okay. So also, here's the other thing. So these shuttles are they armed or not? Yes. Yes. Okay, because you can see turrets and things on them. Yep. But you never see so them it, used in yeah, any. Don't really see them used um, often. Even in like like other books and things where on you see them. The appear, lambda shuttle used. on the the wings, like so, like on the joint. Yeah. Uh-huh. Where the wings fold down, there is a pair of cannons on each side. Yep. So it has four cannons. Yep. So, yep. But yeah, you never see it used at all. And I don't. I feel like you well, won't ever see this in combat. I think these shuttles are armed for primarily intimidation, just to be like, this is a ship that has guns, but then also like as an absolute last-ditch effort. Yeah. Like, my TIE fighters have both been killed and an enemy's charging me. I guess I can take a shot and hopefully kill something. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, definitely not a ship you want to get caught in a dogfight with. <laughs> but it is a way cool-looking ship, and super Imperial-looking, too. I mean, those mm-hmm. really sharp yes. edges, black and white coloring, you know, everything is crisp, you know, on it. It's sparkling white. It's a great-looking ship. I love yeah. it. <laughs> but, sadly, Tier 2. So you both did Tier 1s? Yep. Okay. Well, there Iconic. You yeah, absolutely. Oh, this next one I'm excited for. Yeah, so next we have Slave 1, which yeah. is a Fire Spray 31 class yep. patrol attack craft. Yep. Which is yes, way too that. long a title. Django sure Fett is. and then Boba Fett's ship. Correct. Yep, yes. exactly. So dang cool. Mm-hmm. Tier 1 all the way. This is this is probably top 3 for me. If not number 1. I love this ship. Mm-hmm. It is so cool. So many cool abilities, and I'm sure like Slave 1 is modified. Yeah, but it like, is very explicitly yeah. yeah, stated to be but so. But like you know, it's but it still has a, we know the capability of dropping cool seismic charges and firing missiles. It's got those massive blasters on the bottom. It's got a cargo hold. Like this is a ship that can get crap done. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, man, it's so fair. cool. And as a kid, I remember thinking how cool it is that it's unconventional that it lands yeah. on its back and then stands up to fly. Yep. Doesn't that's, make any sense when you see that's actually why yeah. it's tier two for me. But because <laughs> it's but it's still really cool looking. So I've I've often thought. So when you're sitting in the cockpit of that, does a floor fill in when it's turned? Or no, it's, it, does, the, it doesn't. Turn, you are literally laying on your back in the chair, facing upwards when that when you're landed. It shows that yeah. in episode two. Does yep. it? Yeah, yep. Boba Fett. Remember, he lays back oh, that's because right. he yeah he, he, he has to climb up to look out in that direction because he's laying on his back. And that is why it's it's a really it, like like I said, some of these are pretty arbitrary. That is my main reason it's only a tier two, <laughs> is because I cannot fathom why this is like that's makes perfect sense for spacecraft. Mm-hmm. That's how our spacecraft work in real life thus far. But I cannot fathom why this is the only ship in the entire bleeping galaxy 
that functions that way like why who designed this for what purpose yeah. why not just give us a cockpit that works that we can sit in where there were no matter where we're at and i'd always just assume that the, the chairs pivoted when it was in a landing yeah room. and in yeah. the old oh. eu books that was it is it basically had two um like banks of like paneling uh-huh. inside to like do controls and stuff and your chair did pivot between them for landed and whatever mm. that's but then episode two comes along yep. and it's like, nope, the chair is Chairs horizontal. Well, that's yeah. how that's to... how spacecraft function yeah. in most scenarios. So, so. And you think about like Django Fett with a rocket on his back having to like hop into the seat, you know? A little <laughs> weird. Yeah. Now, uh, was this originally a Mandalorian designed ship or did he what get it from mean? somewhere else? Like, like in lore? Yeah. Uh, no, I think this was just, like, a general okay. purpose, like, militia say, slash, like, backwater police craft kind of thing. Because maybe if it was a Mandalorian-created ship, they would have accounted for the jetpack, because they all have them. Yeah. For some reason. But, uh, apparently not. Yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, I also gave this a tier one. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty iconic yeah. and pretty cool. Nice. Love to fly it. Yeah. It would totally be awesome. Although, I meant, yeah, trying to get into the seat. With <laughs> I can't get weird. around that cockpit. I've never have been able to. Because you would have to, like, what? Like, like mount it like a horse first and then like sit down and like scoot back and like wiggle <laughs> yeah. into position uh, it'd be very indecorous for sure yeah. yeah it's not one you'd ever want to have someone watch you get into the pilot seat <laughs> so oh, there's Boba Fett the most feared bounty hunter of the galaxy gets into a seat scoot 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 I don't scoot. know I think we could take this guy <laughs> <laughs> That's what you think, though. It's <laughs> exactly. lowering their expectations. Catching oh, them off guard. Oh, man. Okay. Let's move on yeah. to one of my other favorite ships. The Houndstooth, a YV-666 light freighter. It sounds like that belongs to a good guy. Yep. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, this is Bosk's ship, right? Yep. yep. Bosk. Yep. Good old Trandoshan bounty hunter. It's brown. It basically only lived in Legends until... Clone Wars, and then you see it briefly in a couple episodes, and I think there's one that is passing, like, in the sky of Tatooine in episode one. Like, oh. you know, just real, like, hmm. oh, it's there for three frames. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, for those that don't know what yeah. this is, it's, it's very, very slender and tall. It's kind. Of, it's yep. more in the... Very blocky, too. Like, yeah. no rounded yes. edges on this. Oh, oh, think the sand crawler, the Jawa's sand crawler. Only on a diet. Squish it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Make it, <laughs> it got Jenny Craig. And give it a little and, thing out the back on yeah, the bottom. Yeah, then it's got engines. two little wings yeah. on yeah. the back near Fins. the engine. So, uh, um, I hate this ship. Oh, really? It's so dumb I think it's. I think it's an interesting design. Like So dumb. It's one of those things where it's like, that is very non-traditional looking. I like it. So It's a tier three for me. It's, it's non-traditional, but it's also uh, just too it's ugly. simple. It's yeah. ugly. I mean, it's, 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 it's ugly in a cool way, though, no. I think. No. <laughs> Unlike some other things. And again, I having not gotten far enough into Clone Wars to see any of it, I just looking at the image and going, that looks really ugly <laughs> yeah and see and i actually even though i even though i hate this ship i tier two it because it's large enough that it's going to have some sort of living quarters so you yep. could live on it and you know go places and, and do things yeah it's yeah. bigger than slave one yeah so but. uh i gave it tier two also i like the ship it's and i think it is a cool look but it's just not as cool as a lot of the others yeah. and it's not as cool looking as some of the other tier twos so yeah. yep like i don't like it as much as the lambda even yeah. So. So next we have everybody's favorite YT thirteen hundred Corellian light freighter, the Millennium Falcon. Yep. There it is. So can we say this all together? Sure. Tier one. Tier two. Tier one. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> How could you, sir? Yep. I was waiting for you, it. You uh, are ashamed to this fandom. <laughs> I am gonna get some hate for this. I know. Han Solo is cool. The Falcon, I don't think is as cool looking as the hype around it. I think it's overhyped in its looks. I have similar piloting issues with the B wing with the Falcon. Yes, very much. Yeah, so. there's that too. You uh, like the Hounds too, but you hate the Falcon. So. Really? They're in the same tier, dude. It's tier two. But but, but I mean, I'm saying but you it's like the, the look. Falcon. <laughs> it is the Falcon, but there. Are, this is one where I'm like, I probably should put this in tier one. Then I was like looking at my other ships, and I'm like, eh. There are other ships that I would rather fly and look at than the Falcon. And the Houndstooth is one of them? 
Uh, no, it's Tooth. No, I like the Falcon more than Hound's Tooth. But you said you like the look of the Hound's Tooth. Yeah, I do. But you don't like the look of the Falcon. I don't like the look of the Falcon a tier one's worth. Of okay. Look. Okay. No, I like I the see. Falcon better than the Hound's Tooth. It is a cooler looking okay. shit than the Hound's Tooth, <laughs> but it's still tier two. I. The Falcon is it is a cool ship, but I think what makes it a cool ship is Han Solo. Han Solo, because when you think the Falcon, you're thinking Han and Chewie flying this thing around. Well, what is cool about it? It's Han doing the flying. See, for me, the big thing that puts it in tier one, aside from just it, the most iconic ship in, like even surpassing the X-wing, yeah, um, is that it it, it kind of broke the mold on starship design in a yeah. lot of ways yeah, too. For when, sure, yeah, for four movies when they. They, you know, they originally had the Taint of Four here and then went, well, that looks too much like 2001 A Space Odyssey. Hamburger and olive. Why mm. not? Can and you imagine the Taint of Four trying to do the things they have the Falcon doing? Yeah, it just wouldn't. <laughs> it wouldn't. Yeah, no, it just wouldn't. What? Yeah, that would be silly. No, and the Falcon is cool, and it, it is like an upper tier two, but there are some other it's a mold breaker that I wanted. Yeah. Yep. Uh, again, for me, tier one, obviously, because... Obviously, it's livable. It's fast. It comes with a chess table. I don't know. Uh, yeah. It's, no. it's, it does not look like you should be able to climb up or down into turrets, but it fits in there somehow. Yep. <laughs> uh, that yeah, used just to everything. baffle me as a child. I could not wrap my head around the scale of it was the main problem, but just like I'd always be looking at it like, you can't climb up it. How does that work? It makes no sense. <laughs> well, and also like the land, the loading ramp doesn't make sense either i know because it you can see on all the external shots that ramp leads right up to the center of the ship basically yep. um yep. but obviously there's a hallway in there that it's not lighting up with so yeah yep. uh, uh, and that's why we just look the other way and that's say right. it's cool anyway <laughs> that's absolutely right. which makes me wonder what the the falcon that you can that at uh disney will will do will do yeah now i know the one like outside that you can see on display you can't go in from what i understand hmm but uh, I think the ramp is down, so you could at least look into it. So I don't know. We'll see how they fit all that. Mm. Uh, but also, oh, and yeah, my other complaint about the Millennium Falcon is that it's never actually depicted properly. Any shot you have inside the cockpit of the Falcon does not show the forks on the left of the yes. cockpit. Oh, I never, know. never yeah, once do you see that it. That bothers me, and especially though, in Solo when you've got the escape pod on the front there, and that should be even worse. Yes. Yeah. It's, yeah. yeah. Um, even yes, it is sloped away, and so it wouldn't be totally in your view. Like, but it would like still the, be there, like the yeah. caterpillar in Star Citizen. <laughs> yeah, oh gosh, that, that, that sucker, man. It's so annoying. <laughs> Landing uh, that thing manually, like yeah. when you can't do the auto land, right? Boy, yeah, it's take tough. it I slow know. because <laughs> <But> yeah, <laughs> even even so with those front forks there. pointed away from the cockpit <laughs> in the view of the pilot, you would still be able to see it. You know, yeah. so it's I hate that it's just never there. Yeah. That's another legit. stupid nitpick of mine. Yep. All right, number thirteen, the VX one hundred as VCX. Said in Solo. VCX. I'm sorry, uh, as talked about in Solo, but as more popularly known in Rebels as the Ghost. Yep. So uh, I tier one this because it's basically the Millennium Falcon, but a little more squished. Yep. You know, no bigger. It's bigger than. Well, the I, I know it's bigger, but oh. like as far as the stuff on it, visually, it's all more it is yeah. more squished. Yeah. 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 So I tier twoed it, but it's also it's so only slightly I. bigger. It's like a couple of meters. Nope. Have you seen the X-Wing models? Because uh, X-Wing is to scale with itself. Sure. It doesn't do a sliding scale like our but model. When I and actually it's checked it, significantly bigger. When I checked it on Wikipedia, it wasn't <coughs> that big of a difference. I'm well, looking, looking I'm going to give you my reasoning. Having not seen, again, having not seen Rebels, I don't have much emotional context to the ghost. So I looked up the ghost and I looked over it and went oh okay so this is another ship that's trying to draw on the nostalgia and fondness for the Millennium Falcon mm -hmm. yep. and uh, basically what the Ebon Hawk did with KOTOR so even though I don't know this one at all I'm gonna bump it up like I would have the Ebon Hawk yep. because that one's no longer canon not currently but I loved my Ebon Hawk I loved being able to <laughs> pretend that I had a Millennium Falcon of my own and uh, so yeah I was like alright Ebon Hawk would be tier one for me this isn't the Hawk but it's definitely at least a tier two because of I'm because of my nostalgia for the Ebonhawk. <laughs> yep. I I tier two'd it. Um I would put this a little above the Falcon. So it's a diamond shape within like a little kite tail of engines sticking yeah. out the back. Um a big bubble cockpit on the front. Um 
design-wise, it makes a little bit more sense. Yes, it does. It, it is like, it feels like Serenity in Rebels when you're watching it. It has kind of a Serenity feel. It's got a big cargo bay up front. Every crew member has their own room. Yeah. Um, then you've got a cockpit, uh, you know. You've got a little communal area, kind of like in the Millennium Falcon. Yeah. Um, and it is a little bigger than the Falcon. Uh, so it's it's nine meters bigger, which n- is... Is 27 feet bigger. Yeah. That's a but lot. when, over the whole length of the ship, it's not a big difference. But it is, though, because the ships themselves are not that big. 27 extra feet is is a lot. How, how many meters... Is the so the ghost? The ghost was forty four meters long, and the falcon was uh, thirty four and a half meters. So now I didn't look so at that's the weight. Basically, that's about a quarter. It's a little under a yeah. quarter of the but co- ghost. But it's also that much bigger in every dimension. Yeah, it's like because it's a diamond shape. So yeah. you take the width of a the falcon, and it's also pretty substantial. Um, like, like it's it's a lot. There's a lot more mass in that ship than in the falcon. They're both kind of like the pancake shape where they're a lot wider and longer than they are tall. Yeah. But the Falcon is quite thin and the the Ghost is, is quite thick. The Ghost also has its own shuttle out the back. It really... It, boy, the more I think about it, it really is like Serenity. Only smaller. Because Serenity actually has two decent proportions yeah. for like the size of the cargo bay and stuff they have. And you got some funky interior uh, Millennium Falcon... Yes. shenanigans going on here with the ghost but but it's a great ship i like it uh it's tier two and cool. for also like the falcon the crew for me is what makes the ghost cooler yeah so, same as serenity yeah yeah because serenity itself is a fugly ship let's be real <laughs> it's weird <laughs> it's literally an ugly duck <laughs> I, mean, I, I have it on my keychain over here but yeah. it's out of range <laughs> so for also just to complete with the the dimensions so wikipedia does not give a width for the falcon yeah. Um, but it does give a width for the ghost, which is 34.2. So the Falcon is a little bit longer than the ghost is wide. Yeah. Which is including the forks and yeah. the engines and all that. So. Huh. All right. So next we have the ARC-170, ARC-170. Also not known, but should be known as the Asterisk Wing. <laughs> um, yeah. These are the ships that you see the clone <laughs> troopers flying in the opening battle of episode, episode three. three. Which have their S foils that are clearly meant to hearken to the upcoming X wing. They lock into attack position just above the above and below the wings, making this asterisk shape. So that's how I remember them as the asterisk fighters, mm-hmm. uh, asterisk wings. And uh, I put these. Where did I put the Eric one seventy? I put this in tier two. Like I, I, I had a lot of tier twoers that were basically just. Uh, it's like, oh yeah, this is the this is the poor man's X wing. You know, like yeah. it's yeah. still a good ship. I've got I've got the even poorer man's X wing. You know, the, or it's the one ships that is like this is. I like the whole tying together visually with things. I like that these uh, that moment watching episode three the fir- for the first time when they locked their S foils into yeah. attack position, and I was like, oh, these are proto X wings. That's so cool. <laughs> That was a nice moment, but that's basically my entire love for the ship is just that moment. Otherwise, I have no feelings. See, well, and that's for me, all you see of the ship. You too, call yeah. these the poor man's X wing. I call the X wing the poor man's Arc One Seventy. <laughs> <laughs> I love the Arc One Seventy. That's an easy tier uh, one for me. I six wings are better than four. Uh, you know, like <laughs> four of those wings aren't doing anything. I know, but they look cool. <laughs> but they've got the huge old guns out the on you know on the wings. Uh, they've got the the rear gunner and stuff. That the nose that kind of like droops down a little bit on the front. I think it's a really, really, really cool looking design. You got those massive engines. Oh man, I think it's so dumb looking. I <laughs> love <laughs> the Arc One Seventy. It I is. Mean, it is one of my all time favorite Star Wars ships. It 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 gets a little bit of coolness because it is a fighter. Uh, but I tier two'd it. Yeah. So. Well, that's it's just definitionally in my head. The Arc One Seventy is the oh, it's the Proto X Wing. Mm-hmm. Like this is this is a ship I know entirely because of. Of another ship that yep. I know it. Its purpose was to hearken to this ship, and that's all. Yeah, right? so. oh, I love it. Okay, next another uh, Republic ship here of uh, the V nineteen Torrent. So this one is a little bit weird. It's a three wing ship. All the the two wings on the sides dip down, and then it's got a third wing that comes right out of the belly and just straight down. Um, those wings fold. the The middle wing actually folds up and comes up behind the rear, and then to an upright position. Hmm. And then the side wings fold up huh. into it as well, kind of like a lambda. Um, they show it landing 
in the hangars of uh, of cruisers in Rebels. Right. Because I always wondered how that ship worked. Like yeah. how I'm like, you can't land on, like on your belly like normally. You got a big old wing sticking down. Yeah. And they show it uh, raising up out the back. But huh. uh, it's a pretty cool looking ship. It's really, I think, unique looking, but still looks pretty cool. Uh, so for me, it's a tier one. It's a tier three for me, uh, mainly because this is one of those I was telling these guys before we started here that I... So I sat down, went through this whole list to make sure I knew what all these ships were bef- last night before we recorded. And then, uh, so I went through every single one and then I went to tier them. And anything that even after, even, I, this is literally 10 <laughs> minutes after I went through the entire list. If I couldn't remember what it was right after having read the article, it got tier three. And that this was one where I got to that and I was like, this one was not distinct enough in any way for me to actually remember to tie it to its yeah. name. I, I have no idea what this is, so it's tier three. I mean, I think it looks kind of dumb. What role does it fill? Uh, general fighter. Okay. Um, I mean, it, it just, doesn't really have any like missiles or anything like that. It's just a fighter. Other than the look, it doesn't really stand out for me in any yeah. way. I yeah. don't even really see it a lot, really, in any uh, <laughs> memorable fashion. Um, and then it, I feel like it looks unwieldy and kind of dumb, so I, I tier three it. Oh, I like it. Uh, okay, next. The N1 Starfighter. Yeah! So this uh, this is the yellow fighter with the chrome finish on the front. Yep. That These are the royal, the escorts for They're the, the royal ones starship. They're the spinning in them is a good trick. Yes, yes. <laughs> That's always a good idea. Um, these are the ones that apparently have a pretty fierce autopilot that takes a uh, R2 droid a while For to real. turn off. <laughs> the security features on that autopilot, man. <laughs> like, for real. R2 can hack into the Death Star's computer in just a few seconds. That is a great And take yeah. out and That's find out where person. Leia is. And he takes most of a battle to figure out how to stop the autopilot in this ship. What the crap, R2? Yeah. <laughs> um, or maybe... Okay, here's, here's my headcanon for this, guys. You ready? <laughs> R2 had such a difficult time breaking into this that R2, after that battle, was like, Never again. <laughs> ne- I will dedicate every free minute I have to learning oh. how to hack into computers. I was gonna say, never again will I be bested in like that. My my theory was that R two was like, I am so sick of this annoying little brat. I will sacrifice myself to take him. <laughs> oh my goodness! And then finally went. All right, maybe I don't want to die. No, that see, much. and then when he gets to the Death Star, R two's like, finally the moment I've been waiting for, the ultimate challenge. I've spent my whole life. Building to this moment, <laughs> or maybe the Death Star systems really just had crappy security because they're like, "Who's gonna, who's gonna try and hack into this?" Yeah. I mean, come on. Yeah, they'd have to get in first. Right? Yeah. yeah. Um, oh boy. So the Ooh. the the N one Starfighter for me is a tier one. I yeah. I like it. It's I it's it's a really great example of some of the best sensibilities of the prequel trilogy yeah. and the Phantom Menace, it's where right. they were. <laughs> Where they were trying to, where they're showing us this sleeker, yeah. nicer version, you know, this cleaner version of Star Wars that we never got to see. Kyler, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> that we ne- <laughs> I keep hitting my microphone, everybody. I'm so sorry. <laughs> that we never got to see in the... Uh... Now I gotta do it one more time just to bug Ross. You've already done it once this episode before that. <laughs> I know, it was an accident uh, then too. I'm so sorry. Yeah. I can't but be trusted uh, around our yeah. sensitive equipment. I like the cleaner sensibilities. I like the shiny, let's show off our CGI yeah. chrome. I, I like. think it's a really cool looking yeah. design. It's not like anything that we'd seen yep. before in Star Wars. Yeah. You know, it's got those three little spindly things. Got the things charging out tail the back. off the back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. It's like, it's like, what? It, Why it is can, that even there? It can so automatically cool. load an R2 unit from beneath. It's yeah. like, where did this technology go? Those poor rebels. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for reals, right? Uh, well, we see that technology come back in the sequel trilogy. Yeah, yep. <laughs> <laughs> Just kind of vanished but, for a while. Uh, but. It's, it's as so long cool as you looking. can extricate it from any emotional impulses regarding Anakin, then it's a great <laughs> ship. <laughs> yeah, tier one for me as well. Really cool looking ship. I like the chrome on there. Yeah. Uh, the blue flames coming out of the engines are just a really cool look to yeah. it. It's It may not be the best ship or whatever out there, but it's way cool looking. I love it. I tier three'd this. Ross. Yeah. As a, uh, because a, uh, would I want to fly it? Question. Oh, I would. I don't. Mm. I absolutely would. No, I it don't. looks like it can go fast. Like, <laughs> look at that thing. Like, See, all the, those sleek lines. It looks like it just wants to go places. What you're describing. <laughs> what you're describing today 
is the we paint flames on the side of our cars. No, 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 no. <laughs> yes. What I'm describing today is fast. like a, not... like the latest, like, you know, Mustang or something. They look like they want to just go fast. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> it's a lie. Don't let it lie to you. No. Painting flames on it would be the equivalent of painting flames on it, Ross. <laughs> no, this ship, in its in the, the chassis design itself conveys very well, I think, the idea of speed. Very sleek. Very, yeah. I, I like it. Oh, but hey, what yeah. else? So you you tier three this? Mm-hmm. Oh, Ross, wow. It's amazing <laughs> you can be so wrong. <laughs> or so right. Uh, two of us would disagree. All oh. right. So after the N1 Starfighter, we have oh, the V-Wing. Yep. So this one we see at the end of episode three. That's the first time we see it. I think it shows up a couple times at like towards the end of Clone Wars. I could be wrong. I want to say like literally like the end of season five, season six of Clone Wars. Yeah. I think it's there. This is what's flying escort for Emperor yes, Palpatine's shuttle. After he shuttle. rescues uh, yeah. Vader and, yeah. and there's two ships flanking his shuttle. That's the V-wing, and one of them even comes up and lands. Doesn't yes. It? Yeah. So the the ship design is like literally like a spearhead, mm-hmm. kind of a leaf bladed spearhead. So it's really flat and wide, and then it has two wings on either side that are vertical. So if you're looking at it head on, it looks kind of like an H. So yeah. the shape. Okay. Interesting story here. Is this what you're talking about? Because I don't remember yes. that from episode three. It yep. is. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. It's, I thought we again, were looking in at episode, It's literally at the very end of episode three, and it's literally just the one yeah. shot of the okay. shuttle as they escort it. So Fair. I tier three this because this is another one of those that I had to relook up because I didn't remember what it was. And apparently, and I just had to do a third time because I, <laughs> yeah. I did tier two, and this would be like lower tier two for me. Um, I, it's not quite a tier three. I don't love the design, but I kind of love the design. Like, if that makes sense, I think it's kind of cool. But then I look at because it's unusual, right? But then I compare it to other unusual ships like the Slave One or the Hound's Tooth, and I'm like, it's it's not that cool though. Yeah. So yeah. it's like lower tier two for me. Uh, Plus, it's also Empire, so I can't, like, you know, justifiably put it in Tier 3. Yeah. <laughs> I Tier 3'd this. Um, we don't really see it do much. I've never really heard much of it, you know, so it can't be that awesome. So, it yeah, just got that's dusted. Fair. It, it doesn't do almost anything yeah. that we see. I mean, it doesn't look like it's even really capable of doing a lot. I mean, we it, see... It's an interceptor is what it is. Is it? Yeah, so it is... It's designed to be extremely fast, and it has almost no armament as right. a result. It's just there to sort of harass you until everybody else arrives. I was going to say, because I think you can see two cannons on it, but that's yeah, all it, the Yeah, each wing has two cannons, but they are significantly less powerful than mm-hmm. other ships of the era. Right. So, yep, it's... Almost like an A-wing, but less powerful. All right. So, all right, number eighteen. Gosh, guys, we're only barely halfway over. <laughs> Z ninety five Headhunter. Here we go. This first appears in the Clone Wars. Yeah. Uh, and then appears again in Resistance because yeah. that is what Ezra or not Ezra uh, Kaz is flying as a oh, modified, really newer version of mm-hmm. the Headhunter. Oh. The it's the I think Z ninety six is what it is. I, I think I can't remember. See, I, I looked at this, I looked it up, yeah. and I was like, oh, right, I remember this ship. Uh, the ARC-170 is the poor man's X-Wing, and the Z-95 Headhunter is the poor man's ARC-170. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, this this was uh, Legends canon. It was the poor man's X-Wing, because yes. it, it's what... So, right. that's it, and that that is still in current canon. Is it? Yeah, so that that's one of the things that Clone Wars was like, we like that, let's just bring the canon level up a notch mm-hmm. yeah. um so that well the, i mean when it made it legends was still canon so. yes <laughs> yeah. and that's what i that's why i said they brought it up a notch in oh, canon. Right. they brought it out of the books and stuff into oh, television right, right. Into uh, it also shows up in jedi academy that's yeah. what your character Doesn't. flies mm-hmm. oh. so they basically so long, yeah. <laughs> the x-wing is the baby of the arc 170 and the z95 they take the the essentially the the base chassis of the z95 and then they give it splittable s foils like the arc 170 yep so if you don't know what a Z95 is, imagine an X-Wing that doesn't have wings that can pull apart. Yep. That's what a Z95 looks like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I put it tier three just because it was like, yeah, this is this I is one did. one level lower than the ARC-170 for me. So. Yeah. It was also one that I had to relook up when I was going through. So yeah. it was like, oh, right, right, right. That one. The poor yeah. man's poor man's. Yeah. I mean, it's it's. I don't think it has any missile ports on it. It's just got the two yeah. guns on the side. It's, so it's. Yeah, that's yeah. it. I think it is shielded. Uh, it so. is, but it's not 
really great. Right. Uh, not great shields, and it's it, again, it has half the the weaponry of the X wing because the X wing has a gun on each of its four wings. Mm-hmm. The Z ninety five only has two wings and only one gun on each wing. Yeah. So it's it was just cheaper, and that's why the Republic was like, "Hey, we're losing this war. We need something that we can build a lot of really quickly." Here you go. Right. Um, I can't find what exactly it is, so I'm just gonna have to pretend that Z ninety six is right. For Kaz's. That's for me. For resistance. No, and it does seem there is a... There are two different types of ship that sit under the Z-95 number. There was the Headhunter, and then there was yeah. the... Uh, what was the other one? It's the new one from Resistance. Is it? Yeah. Okay. So there's the old... So there's the Z-95 Headhunter from End of Clone Wars that has little fins on the nose and stuff. And then there's the right. new sequel trilogy era headhunter that has like an even bigger fin on the nose a slightly different nose <laughs> shape i'm just Bent picturing wings. little tiny john boyegas all over it's yep <laughs> <laughs> just hold oh, on man. for your life yep so there we go cool. okay uh oh tier three for me on the headhunter mm-hmm. yeah. like right, it's cool it's a star wars ship but it's just not cool enough to get out of tier three yeah. Yeah. it's yeah. just not no it's not fast enough it's not flashy enough it doesn't have enough guns there's just nothing cool enough about it it's legit uh, okay, next is the Delta Seven Aether Sprite. This is the arrowhead-shaped Jedi Starfighter. Yeah, the one that Obi-Wan flies in Episode 2. Correct. That has its own little built-in R2 unit, R4. Incidentally enough, but. that's the tier it gets for me. Tier 2. Yep. Uh, this is also a Tier 2 for me, yeah. Me as well. Um, wow. I think this is only our second time. Third time. Oh, Because we also agreed on the Z95, actually. Oh, okay, yeah. Alrighty. Wow. Wow. But yeah, so this is the original Jedi Starfighter. It's a cool... This is like upper tier two. Yeah. It, you know, if there was another spot it's, opening yeah, tier one... Spoiler, spoiler coming it. up. It's like I looked at this one and I was like, all right, this is the poor man's version of the one we get later. Mm-hmm. And yep. <laughs> yeah. that'll be a tier one. I, yeah, I... Yeah. It uh, does not have its own hyperdrive. Requires the use of that hyperdrive ring. Which was get fun. Anywhere. Which is yeah. a cool... Yeah, cool yeah. looking, but like... Thing. As far as practicality goes, I wouldn't want it for that reason. If I have oh, to yeah. buy a whole other attachment if, to my If at the time toy. that was, uh, you know, it's like if you want to fly a fighter from the, and they don't really have hyperdrives attached to them, well, yeah, cool. There but, you go. Yeah. But it obviously got eclipsed pretty quick. So next is the Star Courier, better known as the Sith Infiltrator. This yes. is Darth Maul's ship from episode Darth one. Darth Maul's was named the Scimitar. Mm-hmm. Yep. And even better, I had not realized as I looked up the Scimitar and was reading about it. Because it was heavily modified, of course, because yep. everybody heavily modifies their ships if they're anyone worth being. Um, <laughs> it's true. You pretty much have to modify your ship if you're going to be. It also in contained yeah. Darth Maul's um, speeder bike, or as I call it, the Sith scooter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but that thing actually had a name. Did you realize that? The scooter has a the name? The scooter is named. His wow. ship is the Scimitar, and his Sith scooter is the Bloodfin. <laughs> I love it. I saw that and I was like, "Whoa, there, Maul!" Yeah. Several Whoa quotes there. about naming your sword from Game of Thrones are coming to mind, right? Now. Exactly. <laughs> we can't repeat them here, <laughs> but I do feel they fit. Maul was apparently still in his edge lord phase. <laughs> Maul, sure prob- was. based yeah. on this, Maul probably also named his lightsaber, and we just don't know. <laughs> and he it. definitely named his three probe droids that he had on that ship. Absolutely, <laughs> Huey, Dewey, and Louie. <laughs> Blood Huey, Blood Dewey, and Blood Louie. <laughs> yep, there you go. <laughs> anyway, wow. Sith Infiltrator. Wow. Uh, blood Finn. That's ridiculous. I know. Isn't it? <laughs> oh, George. I tier one to this one. Uh, I like really? the Star Courier. I think I think if it's Maul ship, it's probably got to be pretty kick A. And I, it's, it was one of those... It, it's the first one I remember seeing on screen in the prequels going, you deliberately designed that to hearken to something I know yeah. from the originals. And so when, when you see it from the rear as it comes to Tatooine and it's clearly it looks, looks like, like a TIE fighter. fighter. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's cool. That's a nice thing that you did there to hearken back to this. That's, that's like the first early memory <laughs> I have of understanding someone visually hearkening something to something yeah. else, you know? And, and so I, yeah, I like, I like the Sith infiltrator. It's, it's cool. cool and all. Tier three, though. Yeah, I, I tier two this actually. Wow, That's surprising. Got the uh, full spread. Yep. Yeah, I don't think we've done that yet. Yeah, we do. Yes. We have uh, uh, on, like, I think the B wing or something. I can't remember earlier. <laughs> Stephen will tell us. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, so I, I really didn't like the nose 
on this thing. Yeah, that's legit. Um, and that's the thing is, like, the scale is also a little bit tough to it tell. Is it is weird. so bad. Uh, cause like, is that, is it thick enough that you could actually like do is something there space with the nose? There? Yeah. Or are you living entirely in that little ball at the yeah. end? Yeah. And so that's my thing is I feel like yeah, and half of that legit. space is going to fit the blood fin. So <laughs> yeah. like you know like you got to have a dedicated hangar in the back for you to ride your yeah. sit scooter out. So, so I, I feel like it's a ship that looks like it's for you to live in for the long haul but you can't actually live in the long haul for it. I feel like with the scale of it you could probably get at least a couple floors in there. It'd be cozy but you're a Sith. You don't we'll need see. room for more than two. And that's the yeah. thing. <laughs> Because there's only two Sith, Ross, on Apprentice. Sure. Yeah, he, he didn't. didn't he didn't. Oh, no, I didn't. I didn't get it. Actually, Ross didn't but, uh, get it. Ross, it's no fun if we have to explain the jokes. That's fine. All right, Chris, <laughs> you want to explain Ross? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I would love to hear that. Actually. Okay. Okay. So here I'm. I'm pulling up uh, like a an old diagram of the infiltrator. Um, it looks like okay. You know, you had a little bit of room. In there, it looks like there's a second floor in the the dome portion, but I can't really tell what's going on in the nose. I think it is just like missiles and yeah, yeah sensors things. maybe or something. Yeah. I mean, because it's the nose cloaking is not devices thick or whatever. Yeah, I think it does have a cloaking device. Yeah, it does. But I think yeah, the nose is I think where all your sensors are going to be because it's definitely yeah. not tall enough to do anything with. Yeah, it's just so poorly designed. <laughs> yeah, but it looks kind of cool. Eh. Yeah, all right. I agree. Next we have the Eta Two. Actus, ETA2? How yeah, do you? the ETA. ETA. ETA2 ETA Actus. Actus. So this is the second Jedi Starfighter. Yep. Uh, the JST. One with the little foldy wings. That yeah, that we see Obi-Wan and Anakin flying yep, yep. and dealing with little three. vulture droids at the beginning of episode yep. three, yeah. And I put this one tier one. Tier I was one. like, this is the this is the rich man's version of yep. the It's way cool spray. looking. Yeah. Really interesting, unique design that doesn't look like anything else we've seen before. And yet it does. Like the cockpit kind of looks a little TIE fighter y. The, yeah. the wings, you know, pop out and look kind of interceptory. You yeah. know, like, so it's unique enough that you go, God, we've never seen that before. And yet it still feels a little familiar in some yeah. ways. Really cool design. I also want to give it props to being like just about the only ship on here that actually puts your R2 unit in a spot where you can see them and like feel like they're actually around. Well, the. <laughs> the, the... The other ones, the other yeah, yeah, the other friend Jedi also one, yeah. does, yeah. But that's the poor man's version of this. So, and also that <laughs> that one is built in R four on Obi wans ship. That you, he only has a head. He's built into the wing. He can't get out. So I debated between which of these two Jedi starfighters should be in tier one. Yep, because I really like both designs a lot. But I think the dagger look, you know, it looks dangerous. You know, it looks menacing where it's a dagger. But episode three, the shenanigans we see them pull in the Battle of Coruscant in these. Dang, if that's not some of the coolest like shots in all of Star Wars. Yeah. So that edged the the Delta 7 into Tier 2 and put this one into Tier th- uh, 1 for me. The, so this one is, is Tier 1, but only by a little bit. And honestly, either one of the Jedi Starfighters could kind of swap it out for each other for me. I like both of them a lot. Mm-hmm. That's fair. I actually tier two this, but in thinking about it, I should have switched this out for the interceptor, the tie interceptor. This one should have been a tier one for me, but uh, yeah, hmm. fair enough. Well, you can do that. It's not no, locked in stone. It's written. It's <laughs> on paper. It's in pen. You can't Chris. change it. It's in pen. <laughs> you can always change things, Ross. Cross re- it out. I refuse. Put arrows. Chris. I refuse. That's right, Ross. Take the Sith way. You can't change. Give in to the dark side. It's not the Sith way. Whatever. Redemption. Stop. Changing your ways, Ross. Just stop. You're just trying to force it. Stop <laughs> trying to force it. He's right. Oh, <laughs> I'm happy to see you come to the dark side, Ross. That's awesome. Welcome. No. It's great. Stop it. What's next? Uh, next is the Fang Fighter. This is a Mandalorian fighter from Clone, Clone Wars. Wars. Yep. Pretty cool looking. It's got little wings that sort of fold up, although why they need to fold up to land yeah, makes no sense they at don't. all, nope. but they're still pretty cool looking. <laughs> that Well, when they're landed, they look stupid, I think, but when they're actually in flight and the wings are down where they're supposed to be, I think they look pretty cool. Hmm. I put this one tier two. Um, yeah, tier I have two. very little experience with these. I've just barely gotten to that first Mandalorian bit in Clone Wars. <gasps> 
Oh, Chris, and, I'm so happy yeah, for you. I'm excited. You get to meet Duchess Satine. I have met her. Yes! Yet. Oh, she's um, great. But I put it in Tier 2 because everything that's in Tier 3 has an explicit reason that I put it there. Yeah, And enough. I don't have anything against these. They're Mandalorian. They're probably cool. Yep. Tier 2. Yeah. I actually Tier 3'd this. Really? Yeah. I mean, it, it, it probably comes down more to just not seeing them enough. Yeah. Because I do actually like the design. I think they're fine, but there's just, <laughs> I don't know. If if Dude, I hadn't known better, I might have confused it with a U wing. Of, like the Jedi interceptors, because of the Clone Wars. Yeah, but we don't see them as prominently featured. As uh, we, we don't actually see them do anything other than fly escorts. In in with both of the Jedi starfighters, we see them actually in combat. Yeah, all right, I'll give so, you that. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I do like the look of them, but I just don't know enough about them. So. Oh, sorry, I misspoke earlier. I put this in tier three. <laughs> Again. Should, I'm I flipping wanted, this table. <laughs> I wanted to put it in tier two, but there were other ships that I'm like, well, what am I going to kick out of tier two into tier three then yeah. in place of this? Yeah. And kind of your thing where it's like, it is cool. It is Mandalorian, so it is probably cool. And I do like it, but not more than other things in tier two. Yep. So um, next is the Gauntlet Fighter. This is the larger version of the Fang Fighter. They yes. look almost the same. Yeah. Um, but the Gauntlet Fighter is also a dropship. Yeah. This oh, is, is it? Oh. Yeah. Well, and this is okay. a, the Gauntlet is specifically... This is the one we see in Rebels, Ross. No, I know. Yeah. I, yeah. But I didn't realize well, it was and, and yeah, the... Yeah, the bottom opens up and they drop out of their chairs and turn on their jetpacks and start flying out. Oh, well, they do, don't they? Yeah. That's right. I forgot cool. that. Yeah, this one was Tier 2 for me for the same reason. It's like, I don't... Yeah. It doesn't belong in Tier 1 or 3 because I have reasons for those, so yeah. Tier 2. Uh, I actually Tier 1 this because it does have the cool Mandalorian shape. But it's a lot more livable. Yeah. Right? It has well, the living space. You can um, actually use it. So it what so I was going through and counting like, okay, I only have like eight tier twos left, you know. Do I put both Mandalorians in tier two? And then I was like, Well, I've got some other stuff I want to put in tier two, and I can only really fit one of these in here. And out of the two, the the gauntlet is way cooler than the Fang. So yeah. it got tier two, Fang yeah. got bumped out to tier three. Um, and it got tier two because of the fact that it's a dropship and what we see it do in Rebels with that ability is way cool because it literally opens like bomb doors basically on the bottom and Mandalorians fall out just with gravity and then turn on their jetpacks and start flying around like a freaking like bee's nest or something. That and is it's fun. way cool looking. Really, really cool. That is fun. And then it's got some big guns on it and stuff that do cool stuff. And they're fairly maneuverable, too, mm-hmm. from what we see in And in actually, I, that's another thing I was going to say. Is I feel like this is another case of the animators wanting to do more cool with it than what it should be able to do. Dude, they're Mandalorians. They can do uh, all, cool, all kinds of cool <laughs> stuff, Ross. Yeah, we'll just we'll just say that's right. <laughs> Alrighty. And so, so you tier 3'd it, Ross? Or, no, you... Tier, tier, tier 1 oh, Tier 1. Yeah. Okay, sorry. I'm losing my mind. I was looking at the list and then forgot I wasn't paying attention to you. So next we have the <laughs> MG-100 Star Fortress. This is the bomber from The Last Jedi, the tall the bombers that we see. blown up for no reason at all. Yes, exactly. Tier 3. I put these as Tier 2s <laughs> because, again, I like I like those vertical ships. I like, uh, as opposed to the Y-Wing, this is a bomber that actually has space for bombs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It looks like a bomber. Um, there, It has all the problems of the Y-Wing, that it's slow, it's unwieldy. And, it's but, a lot slower. But I, slower it is, but I like yeah. the design better. I can actually believe this as a as a bomber ship. And, you know, Poe misused it and wasted all of them. Mm-hmm. And yeah. that's part of why they're only tier two for me is because, like, yeah, we didn't really get a good showing from the Star Fortress at all. But Yeah. yeah. And I, I agree with you. I like the vertical aspect of it. It is cool. And I like the idea that they're, again, doing what the original trilogy did, which was, let's look at actual Warcraft, like, yep. you know, our aircraft from World War II, and let's see how we can adapt this. So yeah, I like the idea. Kind of still the name. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the Super <laughs> yeah. Fortress, the Star Fortress, right? Yeah, so this is clearly like a B-17 or a B-29. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, inspired ship. And that is cool. And I actually, I in my mind... As I was going through this, I did have it in tier two originally, but then I was like, eh. Yeah, it is from it the last the Jedi. Three. It is from the last Jedi. <laughs> we don't get to actually see it do much because they all get blown yeah. up so stupidly. We do get to see one take out a dreadnought on its lonesome. Yeah, like, that, that is, is some pretty true. hefty firepower. But I still put it in tier three. Which, honestly, again, also makes me think that Poe did not think that through. If he's sending, how many were there? Six of those? And one of them did the job just fine? Yeah. Why don't you just, you know, take two just in case and then put everyone else in fighters mistakes. to screen? There's a reason he anyway. got demoted. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I actually tier two'd this. Um, 
Yes, we don't see a lot of it. Yes, they do go down way too quick for what, especially what a bomber should be. I mean, no, they're supposed kidding. to be heavily armed, especially one that's called a star fortress. Yeah, like, um, yeah. It, had, it has several turrets on it that are cool. Its armor is apparently made of wet tissue paper. <laughs> yeah. the, it also, um, <laughs> so we have the uh, the visual dictionary for the Last Jedi, and that one specifies that this is actually an older ship from the end of the Galactic Civil War that is still seeing service, basically. When so Leia, it's the Y wing of the it's the Y wing of the yeah. yeah of the yeah. of the resistance. Of, yeah. It's a generate. It's a full generation old. Yes, we shouldn't be using it. We only are using it because it's all we can afford. Yeah, yeah, basically, and all we can find, and so, because yeah. it, it oh. apparently did quite well. well that's for, interesting in then, service. because that means we may see the Star Fortress appear in like the Mandalorian or something. That could be fun. Yeah. That would be cool. Where it is, this is a brand new ship of the line. Top of you know top notch. You bomber. do not want to be bummed by this thing. Yeah, yeah. that could be really cool to see. And actually get to see it, you know, do its job when it's commanded by a smart person. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Or we'll see it heavily modified, so it doesn't have all the bombs, but has other cool things that come out the sides. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Although, if you replaced all those bombs with, like, seeking missiles, like like in Slave 1, so instead of opening the bottom and having bombs fall out, if the entire... Length of it <laughs> just opens out the side. That's literally yeah. what I just described. <laughs> no, I'm just going through my mind. You were slightly less specific as yeah, to what and other so then it's like, dropping, it's like, okay, but... launch the missiles and like a thousand missiles just like shoot out seeking missiles. That, be that would be really cool. Fine. <laughs> Take credit for my idea. Sure. Go ahead. No, I'm <laughs> expanding on your all right, idea. All right. for it. Next just... up, we oh, have so... the Thai bomber, which is down here instead of with the rest of the ties because we were looking at the list afterward and I went, wait, how do we have, how do we have this weird A? Defender on here, but we don't have the bomber. <laughs> because I like defenders better than the bombers. <laughs> so the Thai bomber is the one that looks like it has two cockpits. It has one is a cockpit and one is and the ordnance bay. Yeah, yeah, two tubes in the center of its Thai wings. And uh, we see it bombing asteroids in uh, uh, Empire, Empire Strikes, Strikes Back, Back when yep. it's looking for the Millennium Falcon. Uh, yeah. Tier two for me. I mean, there's nothing real special about it. This is probably like lower end of tier two. It's a cool looking ship. I like it as far as bombers go. I like it better than the Star Fortress because it seems like it can get the job done better. It's definitely definitely more maneuverable. maneuverable. Yeah, exactly. I got it as a tier one, actually, mainly because of nostalgia. And I had a... a, This is exactly where I was going. Nostalgia. I had a Micro Machine TIE Bomber as a kid, you know, amongst my other Star Wars Micro Machines. And so... Yeah, it's cool. I I, like yeah, it. that was. I just remember that w- it was one that really caught my imagination as a kid. Where I was like, "It's got two Y," and then I was, "Oh, that holds all the bombs. That's so cool." Yep. Yeah, exactly. I like yeah. the bomber. I actually tier three this, <laughs> just because. And again, it comes down to the Empire just not caring about the pilots. Yeah, though, I it wouldn't want to fly it. Room for two pilots or for two crew, That's one true. pilot and then one bomber who handles oh, all the bombs. They're all in the right one, mm-hmm. yep. and the left one is full of bombs. So the right one has. A cramped two-person cockpit and a bunch of fuel, <laughs> and then the other one yep. has all the ordnance. Yep, yep. So there you go. So next we have a J-type three twenty-seven Nubian <laughs> starship, Royal Starship, better known as Nubian. Oh yes, <laughs> <laughs> we got lots of that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> This, oh, is, this is the man. queen's ship from episode one. <clears throat> yes. A very shiny ship. Yes. From, oh, well, yeah. Okay, I'm going to just do it now. So, brief history of that specific ship. Ooh. Okay. It's Padme Amidala's. Yep. It gets traded in or whatever. You know, it's, it's there. They make it back, whatever. Palpatine is from Naboo. When he becomes emperor, that ship, that specific ship, goes into his personal collection. Huh. And holds a bunch of like Sith propaganda crap on it, like old Sith Master junk, whatever. It's a little mini museum for Palpatine. It later ends up in the hands of Brendel Hux, hmm. General Hux's dad, as his. It was a gift from the Emperor. Huh. Uh, so then it joins the First Order. Then Brendel Hux crashes on the planet where Captain Phasma is from. She ends up rescuing him oh, at his crash I think site. I see where you're going here. He recruits her into the first order, promotes her to be like a unique one, so she doesn't get a number. She gets a name. Right. She goes back to the planet, kills all of her people, and goes back to that ship. Takes it to a stormtrooper factory, 
and black fashions armor factory armor and fashions right? armor out of Queen Amidala's <laughs> ship. Wow. That's her chrome armor. <laughs> I, mean, I, I don't. I don't know. <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> I mean, because right? part of me is going. We should have included that on our probabilities episode. Well, yeah. when, when we, we get to the sequel yeah. series, yeah. I'm, because I'm, I'm just instinctively looking at that and going, if it's like in, in the original trilogy when it's like, oh, we got all these plans for Luke's twin sister. Oh, well, we're not going to have time for that. We'll just make it the only woman around. And it's like, <laughs> well, we've only had one shiny thing in the entire effing galaxy. Well, what's so funny is like, so let's her make armor her shiny. Could have been armor. made out of any metal from anywhere and just polished to I the know, shine. Right? But the fact that the author, and this this is from the middle of the book, of the Phasma book. Uh-huh. Well, called Phasma. I mean, that, yeah. that's the book. Anyway, the whole middle section is super stupid. The beginning third is great. The end third is great. The middle s- section, I was like, we cannot get through this fast enough. Yeah. It is so dumb and pointless. And it's from that section where I'm just like, oh, God, I'm like, stop it. Stop it. <laughs> so I think it's funny that that much effort. It, so this is not like that where they're just like, oh, shoot, we're running out of time, whatever. Okay, let's oh, yeah, just use yeah. this. It's, not it's a- somebody sitting down going, you know. That was shiny. <laughs> this is shiny. Let's go into Why the not? book's worth of effort to make this connection happen. That is Ugh, You know? Oh, nah. uh, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so there you go. the Royal Starship trivia. itself. Uh, tier three. I, I, I like it. Tier one. I tier two it. Again, livability. Full spread. Nah. Yeah, it's very no livable. Weapons. No weapons is, is very, a big deal, yeah. yeah. It is kind of livable. If you look at the interior shots from episode one, it's a lot smaller than you think, and there's a lot of wasted space in the nose. Sure, there's a lot of wasted space, but it has, like, yeah. beds and a kitchen and bathroom. It's and a royal ship. It's yeah. going to be pretty comfy. Yeah. And you, now you have all the space that I, you can do whatever I you want with. It's in, got room for the queen's effing wardrobe in yeah. it. Like, I like, that, that's <laughs> true. I like the... Uh, that's like a Lando-sized <laughs> wardrobe there. <laughs> That's true. The only person in the galaxy who can rival Lando Calrissian for wardrobe. <laughs> the Queen of Naboo. <laughs> no, for me, uh, the chrome accents on like the N1 Starfighter look really cool. For mm-hmm. me, it's too much chrome. It really oh, yeah, that's, I, yeah. I don't I, like I agree. I it was that. too much. Yeah. I get that. So for me, that's what kicks it from like a tier two down to a tier three is I'm like, eh, it's just... It's too much. Too yeah, much. And yeah, that's fair. I can understand that. The cockpit windows are weird too. Where they it's like also, it looks like bars. it's missing wings. Like it's like the fuselage of a ship that they forgot to put the rest of the parts on. You know. I mean, it's got. The, I can see that. It has yeah. teeny, teeny, little, tiny little, little baby nubbin. fins yeah. on yeah. the. Well, see, and I'm also including in, in this. We also see a shiny Nubian ship in um, episode now, two that she's flying, and well, another and one that's in episode the thing. three. Give me the Royal Naboo starship from episode two that looks like a big giant B two bomber. The, the, the one that gets blown up or whatever um, at the beginning yeah, of episode gets, two. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, ones. that ship looks way cool. I'd really? That, that, one looks, that, in tier actually, that one looks far like more nerfed to me. Yeah. Like, it's oh. just like a little pill. No, no, no. no. You're no, thinking no. of the one from episode The beginning three. of episode oh, two oh, okay. when yeah. the, they right. had the bomb I had, I had two and three yeah. confused. Yeah. yeah, I agree. And that's the that part That one looks really cool. That one does look awesome. But episode one's... Blech. Yeah. It looks like no the one way. from episode three is the escape pod from the one from episode two. <laughs> that's kind of what it looks legit. like. It does look like that. But, yeah. uh, oh, boy. Yeah. Okay. So next we have the, where are we? The oh, solar the sailor. solar <laughs> sailor. This. <laughs> I so, saw you typing this on our list, and I was like, you know, I'm going to let this slide. <laughs> I, it's, it's no briefer than some of the others we've discussed. Know, so and dumb. it's iconic. Like, everybody yeah. knows what the Solar Sailor is. Yeah, this so is this Dooku's is Dooku's escape ship, ship that literally has a solar sail, which is a cool idea, like, from the real world about how to travel. Yeah, you know, with the solar sail. But it looks so dumb. <laughs> it's so weird. It's so wonky. And it's a tier three I remember for watching sure. it the first time and just going, but hyperdrive, like, why you have a hyperdrive? Are you are you right? using that to get a, like a certain distance away from the planet before you go into hyperspeed? Are you hyperspeeding with the sail out? That makes no sense. Wouldn't that just get in the way? Is there air <laughs> resistance in a hyper? I guess there wouldn't be. You're in space, but shouldn't there be some sort of resistance? It Why would you like have that out? Resistance. Like that seems ridiculous. Yeah. And it's like I love the idea. I love that they're going for something odd and crazy and really Star Warsy in a lot of ways. But it just boggles my mind in so many ways that I had to tear through it. <laughs> See, and I thought maybe we should at this point, because when I when you said the solar sailor, I was like, wait, isn't that the Geonosian ship? Oh, wait, no, it's the solar. OK, I yeah. know what he's talking about. But then I thought, well, I'm just going to throw it in here anyway. That Geonosian starfighter that has the two prongs coming out. It's basically just like the little bubble mm-hmm. with the two prongs on the top and the bottom. They're okay. escorting 
uh, oh, yeah, 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 over yeah, yeah. the okay, thing, yeah. you know? And those are space worthy. So yeah. they do technically fit on our list. Those ones I would put in tier two. Fair. The Solar Sailor, though, like bottom of tier three. <laughs> this is the worst ship on here. <laughs> what are you talking about, guys? Jeez. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm assuming it's probably pretty nice because it's Dooku's. Like, yeah. I doubt the dude skimps, but yeah. still. I, it's just it just boggles my <laughs> so mind so dumb. much. I had to put it in tier three. Yeah, I was, it also has a dumb like robot pilot. Yeah, yeah. built into the floor. Yeah, so. uh, it's a cool idea. Yeah. Feels way too much like a Star Trek ship. I that's actually a very yeah. yeah. I can see that. So uh, I can see it in Star Trek. It well, especially because they also did a solar collector thing in one of the Star Trek movies. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so naturally it goes in tier one. <laughs> what? Are you serious right now? Yeah. You're, you're lying. Ross, I, I, you're lying to me. I did it to make you mad. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> but no, I did actually write it down. As oh my yeah, I was going to say, I can serious? see the one right here. Ross! <laughs> no, no, yeah, you see this one from a mile away that this one was going to be at the bottom of everyone's list. And so I was like, you know what? We got we to gotta have some drama. <laughs> so, Ross, what did you kick out of tier one for spite? Uh, no, nothing. That was the first thing I put on tier one planning. This <laughs> so uh, let's go through some of your tier twos that you are now committing to saying this ship is ah, not as cool as the tier here. one. Uh, I mean, we have the J-type Nubian, the Super or the Star Fortress, uh, the Eta 2. Okay, Jedi fighters. so let's take this, Ross. All right, all right. The no, Solar no, no. Sailor no, no. isn't as cool as We're not Eta doing two. this. You did this to, he did this to tweak your nose. Yes. It obviously yes. worked. <laughs> Great. Thank Good you. job, Ross. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Hey, be sure to hold Ross accountable for this, fans. Very, very Besides, seldomly. speaking of things that are ridiculous, let's discuss our next one. <laughs> yeah. Chris, Come I on. want you to read the note that I put in there exactly as I wrote it. <laughs> this says, Vulture Droid, parentheses, all caps, I don't care if it isn't a pilotable ship, exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point, dash K. Smiley face. <laughs> big smiley face. Happy, big happy, D smiley happy, face. Yeah, smiley Capital face. D. Uh, we discussed this one before we ever made this yeah. list, and we, and I asked about the Vulture Droid, and then I went, oh, well, I guess that's not even a ship. Like, you can't yeah. pilot it, right? It's a droid. It's yeah, a drone. I didn't think it was going to be on the list. But, yeah, and uh, then Kyler added it when he saw me adding other things. <laughs> it is. Okay. Which okay, is you why can't pilot it, for sure. You will, but... in fact, not find the Vulture Droid on my list. I replaced it with something else. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> you turned. Uh, I did. I refused to put it on there. Yeah, so I idea. love the Vulture Droid. It's such a cool looking ship. Uh, you know, it's it's the, it's all, it's the bad guy sh- fighter from Episode One. That's what we're talking well, about. It's and, got four. Yeah, and, and, and three. but most prominently Episode One, right? Yeah, because there are yeah. other bad guy ships in Episode Three. If right. you want to narrow it down, it's literally the only bad fighter in Episode One. Right. Yes. Um, it's got four little prongs on each wing. You know, uh, two facing forward, two facing walks rear. Around yeah, walks around. Land. It is technically a droid. So we talked about this episode on our droid episode with Ryan, uh, Ryan Farron. Uh, hey, Ryan. Um, <laughs> yeah, maybe it shouldn't be on this list, but it is so iconic. It is the fighter of the of the Separatists. Yeah, but so as far as iconic for overall Star Wars goes, I'd wager most people who haven't watched Clone Wars don't even remember it that well. Interesting feel a poll coming on yeah we could do that yeah. would be no pictures or anything i'll just be like do you know what a vulture, vulture droid, droid is, is. Yeah. you know what, you should actually do that before we post this i would episode. also point out that yeah, the I'll name that. of this yeah. is a vulture droid it is yes. not a ship. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes i know so ross where'd you put the vulture droid tier three yeah naturally i should have i should have replaced it darn it ah, that's, yeah, a good that's idea, all right Chris. you're not quite that's as rebellious idea. as me um <laughs> that's true ross yeah, follows the rules speaking of which so i put the vulture droid in tier one by the way Speaking of that, though, I replaced this with the Libertine, which is the ship that DJ steals in The Last Jedi. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yes. Now, okay. well, that's a cool so ship. I wasn't going to because I was like, I don't even remember much about that other than its awesome little spiral staircase, which mm-hmm. I do like yeah. a lot. Yes. And I like the interiors. You know, it's it's cushy. This it's is fancy. this mm-hmm. obviously, you know, it's yeah. fancy. Um, but then we got that uh, visual dictionary for The Last Jedi and I was flipping through that and I found some details about it that I was like, OK. I like this a little more now. <laughs> One, I saw it I've, when I first saw it. I was like, looking at it, I was like, okay, that's not a bad look. Like, it's not great. It's not, you know, it's not hugely stand out, but it does look pretty sleek. It looks, it looks wealthy. Um, this is, it belongs to, it belonged, past tense, to someone who, it doesn't have any weapons, which is my biggest disappointment in it, but I'm sure DJ you can fix that. You can heavily modify it. Yeah, exactly. Yes. <laughs> DJ owns it. I'm sure it will end up modified or just discarded when he finds something else he wants. But, uh. Not discarded. He'd sell it. Yeah, that's that's a good point. Um, 
or he'd sell but it it's, to you it's, and then steal the shit. Aside from weapons, you. it's pretty tricked out. Yeah. It's got a lot of good stuff. And the, my favorite things about it are this. One, I when I first saw it, I was like, the Libertine? Like, come on. DJ just happens to steal a ship called the Libertine. <laughs> That's <laughs> convenient. Right? <laughs> then I read the description is like, no. This ship was named the Steadfast until DJ stole it. Uh, uh, that, okay, there <laughs> now we go. it's named the Libertine. <laughs> okay. That makes sense. And I like that a lot better. Yeah. Number two, when I looked it up on Wikipedia for more details, I f- one of the th- the features that it had been tricked out with above and beyond what this ship would normally have that caught my eye that I love that someone took the time to put this through through was. Uh, high-level anti-theft deterrence. <laughs> <laughs> and, so, <laughs> and so I love, I love that someone took the time to actually put that in as a specific feature of this ship that gets stolen by DJ. <laughs> that's well, dang and funny. see, but that's the thing, though. DJ being DJ could have exactly. Like, What's going to be the hardest to break into? Sure, yeah, yeah. I, that one. There is there is any yeah. variation on the explanations for why that's there and <laughs> everything about it. I love it. I like it. I yeah. like that they someone took the time to put that on this. That's like great. that's how good he is. That's why he chose this. Any of the above, I'm fine with that. I find that funny. It's a tier one for me, though. It is my very last ship in tier one okay. because it doesn't have weapons. Fair enough. Wow. Although and now that, that we've discussed it, I would ju- I would pop two. it, jump it up over the Royal Starship. So. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, for sure. Way yep. more interesting. So, but that's my Libertine, yeah. Uh, so, 29. Ross, what did you give the Vulture Droid? Oh, oh yeah. Vulture, Vulture Droid was three. Yeah, for him. Obviously, two, three. So, number 29, our second to last here, the Cloud Car. Yeah! What a surprise, dude! <laughs> <laughs> so, these, this is the two-potted so, ship yeah. that you see pursuing the Millennium Falcon as it comes into Bespin. These are the the, the police yeah. the police ships on Bespin, basically. Right. And all three of us were absolutely 100% convinced it was just an airspeeder, which mm-hmm. is why it wasn't on the list. Yep, and then I looked it up on Wikipedia <laughs> because I was like, oh, I guess we can't have this. And it, it specifies on Wikipedia that this is a, while it is an in-atmosphere vehicle, it is a starfighter capable of space flight. And I went, well, that's got to be on there. Yeah. That wonky <laughs> cloud car, that's going on there. Like, so I... Saw Chris typing this. We were both on this the shared Google Doc uh, yep. la- li- very late last night. And I saw him typing this, and I was like, you know, I'm pretty sure it's an airspeeder. I'm way too tired to argue this right now. And I think it was right after that. I'm like, I'm going to go to bed. I'm, I'll am i come back and see what damage Chris has done when I wake up. <laughs> and then we got here, and I'd completely forgotten it was on the list. And Chris was like, guys, it's not an airspeeder. This is space worthy. And I'm like, oh, well, then absolutely that ship is staying on the list. How can we not? This stupid looking ship how can uh, we not have it <laughs> tier 3 for all of us yeah oh, tier yeah. 3 for sure <laughs> <laughs> so this this ship on I was reading about it on Wikipedia it's got two so pods dumb. one side is the pilot one side is the gunner and it's engines like it's bo- boosters that are actually giving it thrust are on, on that the, mid yeah, section yeah. that's yeah. giving it I'm like that is just it's the good. wonkiest dumbest fast, design. Your engines are gonna fly away, right? <laughs> you just shoot this in the middle, and you're both toppling with no chance of. Yeah, it's so like, dumb. <laughs> it's so stupid. So <laughs> uh, oh my gosh! It's and dumb like, enough for for any actual like sentient being to fly. <laughs> that when I uh, saw this, even as a kid, I assumed it was a droid of some sort, a flying droid. Like, no. I thought it was a drone. <laughs> no, this is exactly how it happens. Lando gets Cloud City and he's like, fetch, we need police, but I've already spent a bunch of money on this. Oh, hey, there's a lot full of these that somebody's the surplus. Just kinda, uh, yeah, like, <laughs> all right, that's what our police are using. Here you go. <laughs> you know Lando got those on the cheap and that's the yeah. only reason they're getting used. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, man. <sighs> Okay, speaking of dumb ships... Uh, Our final ship here is the Upsilon-class shuttle. This is Kylo Ren's shuttle from Episode 7 and 8. Yep. The black one shaped like a U. I'm going to go ahead and throw in Krennic's dumb black-shaped shuttle I from Rogue no One in there as well. I have no of it, but sure. Yeah. No, 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 no. These are... Krennic's shuttle is basically a Lambda shuttle. Lambda shuttle. I know, it, but it's, it's really stupid. It, it, I just didn't throw it in earlier. Yeah, I you can't talk throw about it in now. Here. No. No, we're not going to tear it, but I just want to talk about it when we're done. Oh, okay. Right. So, so yeah, this is Kylo's ship. We see him landing at the beginning of uh, that. We see that it, it they're they're bringing they're using it as a drop ship for the uh, yeah. stormtroopers that Who, massacre when the it's villagers. Flying, its wings are at like a seventy five degree angle, and then when it lands, they move all the way to, to like 90. an eighty five degree angle. <laughs> It's so no, dumb. They fall down further than that when it's flying, but no, and they're still mostly upright. Yeah, they're very V 
shaped. Yeah, um, it's okay. so dumb. But no, this wasn't this wasn't deploying stormtroopers in. It wasn't. No, it was. No, uh, no, no. Okay, so That's, they had it other deploys Kylo craft. Ren. It deploys Kylo Ren. Yeah, but yeah. Not oh, okay. This is also the one that he commands from yeah, the when they are, are like on crate. Yeah. yeah. When they're on crate, and this is where Kylo Ren is commanding from, where he tosses yes. Hux against the wall. It's that ship, Tier 3. It's, I think, for shuttles, it's super uninteresting. And the fact that its wings don't even move. Like, what? what is the point of having such tall wings if they're going to basically just stand straight up the entire time? Because it's or not? Kylo Ren's ship, and it looks so metal, dude. They're so big. <laughs> and, they're, and it's black. My wings are bigger than yours. <laughs> yeah. I, I give it some credit for... if I like it in the same way that I like the ARC-170, where it's like, oh, this is hearkening back to the X-Wing. This is hearkening to the Lambda class. Mm-hmm. So I like it for that. And that's about it. So it's a tier two for me. But I can't believe that. Are we going to do this again? Did you tier one this? I tier one this. Ah. I'm yeah. waiting. I'm tier waiting for three. an explosion from Kyler. But okay. Nah. Uh, uh, no, see, because I, I figure I can see why people like it, but for me, I'm just like nah. it's very visually arresting. I like it. For, for me, it seems like a, a beefed up, a hardcore version of the Lambda Show. Yeah. Well, well I, I, no, I liked it a lot more when we see it in Episode Seven, and you don't see it till it's almost landing, and those huge wings are oh, up. Yeah. I'm like, oh man, like that is so cool. And then you see it take off, and the wings are like, eh. you know, like we're just, I'm like, really? That's it? <laughs> oh, come on, guys! That's so dumb. Part of the cool thing about the lambda is seeing those wings go from all the way up to all the way down, and that you get fair. a lot of visual motion. And with this, it's like, here we're gonna move five inches. Okay, now we're ready to fly. Oh yeah, because you couldn't fly before, you dummy. <laughs> I will specify on this too that one of the things I do like about it in relation to all the rest of Kylo Ren's gear is that I feel like as far as his trying to be super cool and metal, this is the most tasteful of his things. <laughs> <laughs> I will say this. I, I do like the body, like remove the wings, but the actual like core, the body of the shuttle is pretty cool looking mm-hmm. and is far roomier than I anticipated it being like, there's like a huge room. Cause we see that in episode eight where oh, yeah, he's throwing, hucks around and stuff and we get to actually see the the rear of the room and stuff there's yeah. a lot of room in it's, that shuttle i mean it's it's larger than the lambda is so yeah yeah, yeah. It's, uh, significantly so it should have more room Pretty so cool. there we have it that is all 30 wow. of them plus a few additions <laughs> we did it guys we did it um yeah let us know if we missed any ships that you would i'm sure we did talk about yeah because yeah, yeah. there's a buttload but anyway obviously um, we we're sticking to just canon and there's all yeah, sorts just canon uh, there's that. a whole bunch more of the YT lines that I didn't talk about. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, there's a whole variation of those. But uh, anyway, we hope you enjoyed that. Let us know where your um, where your rankings would go on this. Where would you put each of these ships? Let us know where Kyler was ter- terribly wrong with that's Millennium right. Falcon. <laughs> yeah, bring it. <laughs> And uh, be sure to follow us on Twitter at More Civilized. We're going to be, well, hopefully you participated in the poll that we definitely put up a few days ago. <laughs> and, no, but uh, seriously, though, take a moment to remind Kyler of how he reacted to Ross <laughs> Tier 3 Battlefront, which is far less important to Star Wars than the Millennium Falcon. <laughs> I will admit I did put it in Tier 2 just to rile Ross a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then... He gives Ross all this crap <laughs> for tear wetting the solar yeah. sailor. <laughs> oh, come on. It's so dumb, though. <laughs> oh, anyway. And then join our Facebook group, More Civilized Podcast, because we do stuff there. We announce a lot of important stuff there as well. Indeed. Speaking of, uh, special props go to our unofficial official fact checker, Steven, for uh, this week's shout out. For correcting us and informing us on <laughs> yeah. Alphabet Squadron yeah. that we were talking about last episode. I was shooting from the hip. Yes. Says he, Alphabet Squadron is going to be about a completely new set of characters as far as I know, and is taking place closer to the Battle of Jakku than the sequel trilogy era. Yes. Uh, just wanted to let people know, so they didn't go into that book thinking it would be about Poe. And as soon as I read that, I was like, oh, that's right, I do remember that now. I just, I couldn't remember it in the moment when we were... Because I didn't have any notes on it. I yeah. was just... Yep. Yeah, so we were way so, off. Thank you, so, Yeah, thank you for reining us back in. Yep. And if you would like to converse with me, you can find me on Twitter at Mr. Underscore R Star. Mm-hmm. Let us know if uh, there's any topics you'd like to hear us cover for the podcast. We love. We always love suggestions. Yep. 
always looking for more stuff to chat about because even with Star Wars, there's, you know, it, it'll eventually someday grow hard to for us to find something to talk about, I'm sure. <laughs> maybe. Um, maybe. Um, and yeah. And yeah, be sure. And also, yeah, do suggest episode ideas to us because you never know what might happen. We have an episode coming up uh, in June. I think it will air in June also. It might air in July. Uh, that it was suggested by listeners and is going to have listeners on the show. So yes. you never know what might happen. That's right. Um, so there you go. Uh, until next time, may the force be with you. Always. Always. I'm Anna Graves, and thank you for listening to a more civilized podcast. Dumbledore. Ah. Fetch. Ghosts. No They're definitely carrying movie. forward Kylo's whole... I'm a Star Wars cosplayer, and look how dark and cool and edgy this is. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Thanks, Chris. Excuse Thanks. me. Thanks for All that. All right, thank you. Just let me restart that again. I don't even know where I was going with that line of dialogue. Ross, sometimes I start a sentence, and even I don't know where it's going. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Really. That, is, that happens more often than you think. Blood Huey, blood Dewey, and blood Louie. Yep, there you go. <laughs> We got lots of that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>